Welcome sports fans to Rocky Stone Field here in Moncton, New Brunswick, a sunny Saturday afternoon as we get ready for a premier matchup here between the top two teams in the Maritime Football League between the defending champion St. John Wanderers and the second place Moncton Mustangs as we get through the cordial proceedings here at uh, center field between the captains as we get set here for a coin toss in the national anthem. Really the uh, matchup here heading into playoffs coming up next week. The top two teams here in the league looking to get it on here this afternoon under the sunny skies. Chris Corey here along with Ray Dunn looking forward to this big matchup. Going to be a heavyweight tilt between the top two teams. Looking forward to seeing what uh, transpires here between the Mustangs Ladies and the Wanderers as they battle for first place in the MFL. We're going to step out here for a quick moment for the Canadian National Anthem. Here we go as both teams get ready here to kick off uh, after that uh, thunderous rendition here of the Canadian National Anthem on electric guitar. This is a big game today, Chris, because the last time these two teams faced off here on this field, the St. John Wanderers beat the Mustangs in the uh, Maritime Bowl uh, final. So, big question for you. How amped up is the Mustangs to play this game today? Did Coach Terrace have to amp these kids up or are they ready to go? Uh, I think uh, with the amount of pride that's on the line here tonight, obviously St. John victorious last year when it counted in the final to take home the MFL championship and then first week of the season this year as well in St. John pulled out a victory here over the uh, Moncton Mustangs. Close fought victory, uh, one score game, I think 15-7. to seven. Um, So going to be interesting to see here. I don't think you have to do too much motivating. These guys have had this game scheduled on the calendar. Again, this is for first place, home field advantage in the playoffs. Must uh, Mustangs need to win by seven points it, to, to, to take first place in the playoffs today. Exactly. So a lot uh, a lot on the line here if the Mustangs want first place in the standings. Not only that, some bragging rights here after dropping two straight to the Wanderers, including last year's championship game. So some uh, some pride on the line and certainly some uh, uh, some bragging rights as well here. Both teams really the, the cream of the crop here in the MFL. You're going to see some, some hard-hitting action. Both teams big up front, physical, O-line, D-line, and lots of guys that can fly around in the back end, both in the backfield uh, and in the secondary here on defense. So we're going to get things started off here as they kick off from the 45. Special teams a big factor here for both teams. St. John gets ready to kick off here to Moncton. Ooh, it's a bit of a short pooch kick. That ball is live. Maybe recovered here by St. John. It looks like well, they've got the ball mark going towards the Mustangs. Yeah, Moncton did, yeah, uh, Moncton did recover did that down. ball. That, that was tough. It looked like number six, Rob Fox, It'll came down with that ball. Again, every, every kickoff here you're going to see, the ball is live once it passes 10 yards. Anybody can recover it. You're going to see some uh, sure hands there by... That might be Morley, 88. Yeah, Cameron Morley, 88, recovered that ball. We're going to see here Dan Comfort getting set in the backfield. 
as the Mustangs start this drive from their 40 yard line as Morley gets the edge out to the sideline. Nice six yard pickup here on first down. That's this yeah, what the, this game's about yards. today. You, both ball. teams are going to be trying to run this ball all game. St. John's got three big backs, and Cameron Mor Morley and Aubrey Ellis will be the uh, rushing attackers for the uh, Mustangs today. I think both teams fairly deep here. Uh, Moncton has sort of that two-headed monster here with uh, Ellis and Morley. Not to mention that big old line. You're going to see your four old linemen in the box. Uh, lots of size up front. Hand off now between Morley between the tackles. Right between. That's that's simple. Right between the tackles for a first down, Chris. You're going to see here. Cameron nice Morley lead block. Good for a Mustangs first down. Number 99 leading up Morley. From Moncton, Brandon Caldwell. We're going to get ready here for second down. But again, I think good strategy on Moncton getting on the uh, the edges here early, getting that pitch to Morley to use his speed against this big defensive front here for St. John. Comfort with the handoff. Ooh. Lots of penetration there by the Wanderers. They stuff Bell, or they stuff uh, Morley on that third down carry. That's Danny Oliver coming back, coming from the uh, middle yeah, linebacker Morley position, carry. Chris, and he just loss. overpowered that offensive and line and took Morley down in the backfield. St. John sending pressure here out first down play. So now second and long here for the Mustangs. They look to gain some of that yardage back here. Just at about at their 50 yard line. Going trips to the wide side now is Comfort. Looking to pass. And he's going deep. Oh. Just over the head, number 23. Tory Hicks. It's good to see Comfort Passes taking some shots downfield, Chris. Down. Earlier in the season, Comfort wasn't getting that ball downfield to his receivers, but uh, he's in the, in the last two weeks, he's really started to come along with that passing game, and it's good to see him taking shots like that down the field early. Like I said, Torrey Hicks had a tantrum. Are nice to see, especially when he has that time, that big offensive line, able to give Comfort time in the pocket here to pass. Stretch that defense a little bit here early with some deep bombs. Again, trips to the wide side of the field. Comfort passing on third down. High pass. Ooh, just out of the reach of Green. He went up for it. Passes incomplete. Just unable to come down with the completion. He's getting time to throw the ball too, Chris. St. John only used a two-man uh, rushing on that on that uh, last play. And uh, with the offensive line of the Mustangs, if, if St. John goes with that two-man front, Comfort's going to have time to deliver that ball downfield. Yeah, Comfort, lots of time here in the last two uh, snaps to be able to Push the ball downfield. Just Green unable to come up with that little bit of a high throw. That's going to bring on Ben George here for punting duty here for the Mustangs. George now looking to get onside possibility here. They've got onside men, so the Mustangs can recover that. Nice recovery there by the Wanderers. Yeah, that was a short punt to, to start this game. I I would think he'd want to play field position, get that ball downfield. What do you think, Chris? Uh, especially at this point here where you're at midfield, you want to give your defense here a bit of a chance uh, to pin St. John deep here. But Ben George, uh, you know, a special team uh, standout here from Acadia, former Moncton High Park, has no problem. He has a leg to kick her out of the end zone. Uh, so a little bit of... Trickery maybe they're trying to catch uh, St. John napping with an onside man trying to recover the ball. But uh, St. John, good field position here at the Mustang 45, and they hand off inside. Ball may have came out, but he may have been down there. I think that's uh, Cameron Bell with the tackle. That's uh, Tyler Kernu running the ball there, and he's running behind the St. John Tyler Wanderers Kernu, leading five, rusher, Evan five. Arnold, number 49. This kid is a bust, Chris. Look at the size of this guy. And and as a running back, you must love seeing the size of him coming behind him with the ball. Well, you got to like the size of your old line when you're sitting in the backfield. Look at the size of number 49. That's uh, There's a reason these teams are the top two teams in the MFL. And you look up front on both teams. you got four down linemen here for the Mustangs and a bit of a 4-2. No safety. Nice completion there. Number nine for St. John. Sean Galbraith. He uh, 
Saw his man wide open in the field there. Took, took the first down, Chris. He took the first down and, and, and completed his pass. Good read there by Galbraith. He adjusted at the line. Saw no safety in the middle of the field. Man coverage. He got the ball out quick as Moncton had the box stacked with six defenders. So Galbraith, a young kid out of high school here, St. John. First year under center here for the Wanderers, doing a heck of a job. He's back in the pistol. He's back to pass here. Oh, incompletion. Pass is incomplete. That pass was out to Evan Arnold. And I'll tell you, this guy, even though he dropped that pass, Chris, he's got good hands as a full back, running back out of the backfield. And uh, I'm surprised to see that ball hit the ground because that guy normally picks that pass up and quite a few yards usually afterwards. Fortunate, uh, fortunate for Monk. Like I said, a big man like that in space with a head of steam, he's going to be hard to take down. So lucky for Moncton, that pass incomplete. But good game planning on the Wanderers part. Now in inside run. Nice tackle. Number six for the Mustangs. Bobby McIntyre coming up. Bobby McIntyre making the tackle on that play. And once again, that's Tyler Kernu taking the ball out to the uh, short side of the field. Kerno spent well, most of the uh, year on the injury he's reserve, Chris. He's just got back to playing last week. He was an all-star back for the Wanderers last year, and he's hoping to take that into the playoffs heading into this year. And that's really uh, played a big part of their success last year was that run game for the Wanderers, especially in the final against these Mustangs. See a bit of backfield motion here by the Wanderers. Galbraith had to throw. Nice completion to the outside. Some nice moves there, number 15 for the Wanderers. Joel Seal was the one that received that ball by Galbraith. Pass Again, Galbraith doing Seale. what he That's needs to do. Chris, he's moving, the uh, he's moving the chains. That's what he wanted to do on that play. Uh, and uh, It's a good strategy by the Wanderers. You're tying out this Mustang defense. You don't have to go up top every play, but you're uh, you know, gaining a positive yardage here every play, getting the ball out quick. No pressure yet two. from this normally play. pretty formidable Moncton defense, uh, which has been known here to rush the passer, especially from the edge. Inside handoff again to Kernu. He gets stacked up at the line. Moncton had the box stacked there. And that time Moncton was, they, they just were prepared for that one, Chris. They crashed the box and they, they stopped Kernu before he got across the line of scrimmage. And I think that's going to be the Tyler game Kernu plan here for the Mustangs. Stop that power run down. game of the Wanderers and make the young quarterback beat him through the air. Nice job there by that front front foursome here for the Mustangs. You're going to see again here, you got Moncton now in sort of a 3-2 defense with a single high safety. Galbraith back to pass, going back to the outside. Seal again. He gets twisted around here by the Mustangs, driven back. Good reception by Joel, uh, Joel Seal in, in tight coverage there, Chris. There was a lot of guys around him very quickly and look at him trying to get yards upfield. Good job Seale. there, McIntyre. Grabbing a hold five. of the jersey. Taking Boys down got by on. a gang of tacklers. They got to him quick. Everything's been in front of the Moncton defense so far. Let's see if Galbraith takes a shot maybe to the end zone here. High formation under center. Hand off to Kernu inside with the big lead block from number 49. Yeah, Kernu tried to take the uh, ball up the middle again. The Mustangs were able to hold him, and now it brings up a fourth down, Chris. Now, Kernu on the carry, it'll be fourth and one. Fourth and one, and it looks like the offense is staying on the field. I think that's the right call here for the Wanderers. Good job there by Cameron Bell in that last play, meeting that fullback in the hole. You're going to see a tight formation here by the Wanderers. Five guys on the line. I formation, same play. Kerner with the legs pumping. He's in for the touchdown. Wow, did you see that? He, he followed Evan Arnold touchdown. right through the line. Watch this play, Chris, as, as the replay comes. He gets right on the tail of, uh, of Arnold, and he follows him right through the line. Watch this. Right through the bounce, legs. bounce, bounce, bang. bang. Right through, touchdown. Kept the legs pumping. It was just big on big there. It's... You're going to see here O-line from St. John clearing the path here. Arnold leading Kernu through. And again, fourth and one. They come out of that with uh, six points so far. We'll see if they go for one or the two-point conversion. Looks like they're setting up for the kick. 
to convert the major. It's going to be Sam Peterson here with the kick, number 11. There you go. That was a pretty straightforward uh, convert there. They took the one point. It's 7 nothing for the Wanderers. It's got to feel good as the visiting team on your first drive to take the ball down the field and score. Positive for St. John, especially with the good starting the field position they had here inside of, half, inside of midfield here of the Mustangs. Uh, a couple Purdue. short completions by Injured. Galbraith, kept Think the chains moving, and uh, doing what they do best with, with what got them here in that run game as uh, Kerwin and Arnold get them in the end zone here on fourth down. And now it's going to be the, the age-old question of how Moncton's going to respond here, if they look to air it out or if they're going to try to uh, uh, really establish their run game here against this tough St. John front. Peterson back out here for kickoff duties. Interesting too, we saw obviously two short kicks here both on a Moncton punt and the St. John opening kickoff. Where this is 10 man football on a large field, coverages can be pretty tough here uh, when you're kicking to a dangerous receiver. Uh, so St. John looking to kick to the left here again. Pooch kick up in the air, live ball and recovered by St. John. Still on his feet, number eight. That's Daniel Bell. Daniel Bell caught that ball, Chris. It got over the 10 yards, which it has to do. Kick the ball has to go Daniel 10 Bell yards, which it does. You can see that job. here. He catches it in stride. Catches it in stride and still picks up yards after the kick. After the catch, athletic play there by Bell to keep the St. John offense on the field. A really a big momentum shift here. Moncton looking to bring their offense out to reestablish some uh, time of possession here, but that defense right back on the field. St. John taking possession here inside the 30 yard line. Looking to put more points on the board here early. Aggressive out of the gate. Good strategy by St. John. We saw that on the opening kickoff. They went back to it. Big set here, Arnold at QB, a little wildcat. With the handoff, he picks up a good eight, nine yards here on first down. One of the things I've been talking about all year with this kid is for a big man, did you see the speed? Once he decided he was going to go, watch this. Oh, little yeah. fake here, little fake there, and there. Tim Tebow through the line. I don't know if he, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he was faking to a couple uh, phantom Play receivers there in the backfield, but it worked. He Three picked up. Side. On the offense, no right end. It's a five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Outside again. Okay, so we had a procedure. <laughs> so we're going back five yards because there was no end on the right side of the line there, Chris. And that's the thing. We, so 10-man football, you have to have five guys uh, on the line. They ran a four-man line with no receiver covering on that end. So a legal procedure takes Arnold back here, who still looks to be in the backfield. We'll see if Galbraith is under center. It's going to be first and 15 here. So now you've got to see this receiver on the right. Be on the line as this time Arnold hands off to Kerwin. He stacked up here after about four yards. Interesting they kept Arnold still under center there uh, as quarterback. I, I'm wondering if something's going on here with Galbraith. We're going to have to watch for this. But uh, the Mustangs were set right in the middle of the uh, of the line that time, Chris. They were expecting that run to come up the middle, and that's exactly what took place. I don't see number nine out on the field for the uh, Wanderers. Rookie quarterback Sean Galbraith led them on that opening drive for seven points. Now Arnold under center. Straight forward here for about five. Big man to take down, a little bit of Wildcat. You know, you have to wonder how much Moncton may have prepared for this type of formation during the week of practice. A nice little wrinkle. There was but another little fake there again, but again, you can see this guy. He is pure power right up the middle between those guards. Big man to take down. Looking to wear out this Mustang defense here earlier in the game. Five minutes left here in the first quarter. St. John on the board early here with a 7 0 lead. Arnold again under center. Looking to delay. He goes nowhere this time. And I've got to wonder if this formation, I think we see Galbraith coming back onto the field here, putting the helmet on, but may have been part game plan here by the Wanderers to sort of give them this uh, formation here early with Arnold as uh, a bit of a wildcat QB here running the ball between the tackles. I don't know, I got a question that call Chris. That was third and nine. 
You got your quarterback on the bench. You had a fullback dancing in the backfield there. Mustangs were on top of that right away. Now we got fourth down here. Which they're going for. They rolled the dice already in this game with that onside kick. Back shoulder throw. Nice out catch there, number 80. And we got a first down. He's got down. a first down. He's got yards gained. Sean Galbraith complete to Nick Noel. That's Nick good Noel, for number 80. Down. Nice catch there on an out pattern. I thought he was throwing a back shoulder here to seal. That was, very, that was a very interesting sequence of plays there, Chris, with the fact that uh, Galbraith was on the sideline there. But then he comes back in, fourth down, and picks up the first down. He's doing what he's got to do as a quarterback right now. I see some motion here by St. John. Bit of a jet screen here to the slot receiver, number one. That's Nick Brinkowski, one of my favorite guys talking about. This guy is fast. He's speedy with great hands. Oh, that's the wrong receiver. <laughs> that's the wrong receiver. That's Riley Ring Deneen. 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 Sorry, that's Deneen that made four. that play. It's number two, Binkowski. I'm sure you like talking about Deneen as well. Nice run there. Deneen's a very fast player. He has great legs. And he's very shifty. He's a very shifty receiver to on the side or on the on, on the field with the ball. You can see Galbraith here in the gun. Back to pass. Oh, a bit of a screen option batted down by that defense. Number defensive 91. line here by the Mustangs. 91. It's gonna be Felix LeBlanc. Felix LeBlanc, he was all over top of that play. Good pressure up front. You see Caldwell in there as well. Moncton really looking to stem that. Run game here of the Wanderers. You're going to see here it's going to be third and four here for the Wanderers. Galbraith now under center, eye formation. Hand off to Kerwin, trying to run behind Arnold again. Bounces it out. We got a flag on the play, though, Chris. There's a far flag side. on yep. the far the side. The, the line judge threw that, that flag. Okay. Wait to see what the call is here. I believe it's going to be some kind of procedure call here. Let's see what happens. If the play stands, Kerwin may have had enough there for a first down. There's no pick. No penalty on the play. No penalty okay. on the play. Our head referee, Mr. Armstrong, has initialed that there is no penalty on this play. They've decided to pick up the flag. You can say it could have been possibly a formation call, which they've discussed and, and uh, decided that the end was in proper alignment. So That can happen. Your outside guy doesn't see when an end is. When one of the inside guys are on the line, exactly. it's tough for the outside official to see that, but your umpire is going to pick that up, and the umpire went over, had Mount the discussion, Honda, said, I had my on, guy, we're good to go. On. They pick up the flag, we're moving on. Honda, yep, looks like the right call. The we're measuring for a first down right now, Chris, and while we do that, why don't I give a shout-out to my fellow officials. Sure to say your white hat, Mount your Mount head John referee Russian today Junior. is Rob Armstrong. Your umpire is Jim Fowler. Your back umpire is Matt Fillmore. Back judge is Jack Kingston. Your line judge is Aaron Dunfield, and your headlinesman today is Andrew Lowry from St. John. For the Wanderers. We've got the all-star crew out here to th this afternoon for this big matchup. We have a mixed crew of both Moncton and St. John officials today, mm -hmm. so got to keep things even. You got to keep things even, Chris. That's right. They made the trip up here from St. John. Like you said, officiating here. A lot of these officials also do the AUS games, high school games. Very well versed here. As we get set up for first down and goal on about the three yard line. St. John going with a big set here as well. Five down lineman, I formation. Galbraith under center. And off to Curran. Oh, he's met in the backfield. Nice penetration there inside. That could be Dunstan. That could yeah, be. That was Ben Dunstan. Ben Dunstan, look at that. He gets right inside the guard there and comes back and gets Kerwin in the backfield. Dunstan had himself a, a monster year last year. Right Looking to repeat that this year, playing down. inside. Lots of pressure up the middle. He's got Caldwell and some uh, some teammates in there as well. Big play, short yardage. You're going to see Moncton jamming the box here. Hand off again to Kerwin. Penetration of the backfield, and he's finished off. 
Yeah, Kernu got uh, tackled in the backfield that time, Chris. All penetration there by the Mustangs. You're going to see this play Tyler off Kernu the get-go. Down for a two-yard loss. It'll be third down. You've got a ton of black jerseys in the backfield. Nice tackle there. Oh, that's going to be 32. That's going to be Alec Pellerin shooting a gap. Now we may have a player down here for St. John. Is that Kernu? Flexing a quad here. Let's see if he uh, may have taken a hit on that knee. So he's walking off to the sideline. Yeah. 26. That's 26. That's Tyler Kernu. And again, Chris, he's just recently back from injury. He uh, played last week, had a monster game last week for the, for the Wanderers. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, though. They've got some other running backs in their stable with uh, Arnold uh, leading the way. Like I said, some other, some other horses to carry the water, but uh, Kerner having a big half here for the Wanderers already. They get set back up here, third down. Galbraith now going to be in pistol with I formation behind him. That's number 30. Taking the handoff here for the Wanderers. That's Josh Brown. Josh Brown they, uh, lined up his uh, halfback there behind Arnold. But again, Caldwell, three yards deep here. Down. Into the Wanderer backfield, blowing that play up before it could ever get started. Josh Brown filled in for one game while Kerner was out, and he had six attempts for 64 yards in that game, Chris, so he can definitely run the ball as well. Yeah, well you can, we can average 10 yards a clip. Again, with that old line and running behind Arnold. Certainly doesn't hurt. Arnold here flexed out to the right. Galbraith under center, rolling to his left, under pressure. Throws underneath, caught by Arnold. A remarkable catch, wow. just unable to break the plane here on fourth down. What a play by both teams. Both teams here had a great play. The fact that Arnold went out to, to the left, or to the right to fake that, he comes across the field where Galbraith throws the ball, he picks it up, and yet the Mustangs were still able to smoke this out and, and tackle him before getting into the end zone. But great play by both teams. Great play by the, the Mustang defense. Great play by Arnold making that catch in traffic. Didn't like the rollout to the weak side. I would have rather had him go to a strong side. But I like the aggressiveness of the Wanderers. They come out here with an onside kick. Big uh, big momentum switch here for the, the Mustangs as they hold the, the Wanderers off the scoreboard here on that drive that they started inside the Wanderers, the Mustangs 30. Now, Comfort handing off. So it looks like Morley. That looked like, I we'll couldn't tell if that was, was, yeah, I think that was that's Ellis. Ellis Aubrey Ellis, Aubrey Ellis uh, got that ball out of the end zone, which is the most important thing right now. You gotta keep that ball out of the end zone at this point here. You don't wanna give up Aubrey a safety to St. John. Yards. Exactly, you don't wanna give up the two points to St. John, that brings us to along the with good field quarter. position. That's the end of the first, uh, the score, first quarter. The seven, both teams are gonna no switch score. ends, but. A pretty interesting first quarter here already between the Mustangs and the Wanderers where we've seen the Wanderers score early and be knocking at the door here again, but a big defensive stand on fourth down by the Mustangs, keeping this to a one-score game. It's a one-score game. The Wanderers are definitely controlling the pace of play in that first quarter, Chris, but, uh, you know, it's it's early in the ball game. Early in the ball game yet to, uh, to make any predictions at this point. Still early. I think Moncton started to gain some momentum uh, their defensive line really picked it up that last drive inside the 30. Uh, they were getting some penetration here into that St. John backfield. We'll see if their St. John's old line can get that corrected because Galbraith, Arnold, or Kerwin aren't going to be able to Kernu, sorry, aren't going to be able to stand that type of uh, that type of penetration. But if Moncton can establish their run game here with Ellis and Morley, start to wear down the St. John defense, who really only been on here for a couple plays this first quarter. This big old line here by from the Mustangs. Evan Melanson, Danny Duero. Pitch to Ellis out to the left. Nice cutback. Nice cutback. He's got some room. Coming to the right. Nice block there by Light. Oh! Nice form tackle also by number 21 from the Wanderers. On what the outside. What a run by Ellis here. Look at this. His cutback goes to the outside. 
He's going to pick up a first down here, Chris. That's a huge first down when you're starting that deep in your end zone. What a tackle to there. Number 21. 21, Alex McGarvey. A great defensive back. He's always, his name's mentioned all the time when the play comes the outside. But uh, great run by Ellis there and, and picking up that first down for the Mustangs. Big, uh, big gain for field position here for the Mustangs. Nice tackle there by McGarvey. It's nice when your corners can cover. It also helps when they can tackle. And you're going to see here with this Moncton run game. They go back, flex right here are the Mustangs. Comfort looking to pass over the middle. Incomplete for Akeem White. Pass is incomplete. That brings up second Comfort's got to take a look at the other side of the field here today, Chris, just because St. John Wanderers have two great defensive ends, or, or, or defensive backs with McGarvey, who we just mentioned about, and they've got a defensive end, or defensive back named Chris Freak, who's actually was injured last week and not playing today. He's got to be looking to the other side of the field on the wide side, because he did have a player downfield open on that play. Let's see what Comfort's reads are here on this, uh, this next set of downs. Second and 10, Comfort in the pistol. Little fake motion, the handoff inside. Ellis, he's met. Nice stick there by number 20. Cody Reed. Cody Reed uh, was right there for that play, Chris, and put us, he shut down that play very quickly. Held up there as he kept him between the tackles. Nice pop there by Reed Cameron playing halfback. No We've seen McGarvey can ten. tackle that corner. Reed just showed that he could pop you too from a halfback position. So St. John pretty rugged. We've got a third and long coming up. Third and long. Likely a passing situation here for Comfort. He's got trips to his left to the wide side, field side, which is where he's looking and he's throwing deep. Bit of a wheel route. Unable to connect. Unable Passes to connect, and there were some bodies open downfield down. there, Chris, when you watch this play back here. Three guys out to the left-hand side on the wide side of the field, as you mentioned, and I think Comfort had somebody downfield here, just uh, wasn't able to get the ball to him. You see, looking to run that trips play to the field side. And Moncton now bringing out the punt unit. As they're inside their 20-yard line looking to maybe pin St. John let their defense play here a little bit. I don't think we're going to see an onside punt here at this point, I would hope, but uh, expect anything as we do have a couple deep backs here for the Mustangs who are going to be onside. And basically an onside player for those watching at home is anybody that's behind the ball when it's kicked. That yep. you're able to, You don't have to give the five-yard cushion. You're able to jump on that ball and recover it for your team. Kick is off, nice kick by George. Taken by number one. Ooh, nice stick at the 50 yard Ooh, line, and he's hurt. We got a flag coming in there late on this play. play. I don't know if that was a cowboy tackle from the back, if he had his shoulder pads. But here he is, Deneen, number one. Stiff arm cutting to the outside. Stiff contact there to the head. Morley and Deneen met at midfield. We got an unnecessary roughness here. Appears to be against Moncton as they're on the return. Back. We have unnecessary roughness against the kicking team, number 88, 15 yards, first down. So that's going to be against Morley for basically the head to head things. contact that's on the right. tackle. It'll be that's first right. down for St. John. And once again, St. John's got beautiful field position here. Again, Chris, this is uh, this game's only seven nothing, and this is the third time that St. John's inside the uh, Mustangs. They've got great position on the Mustangs side of the field. Mustang 35 yard line here. St. John Galbraith back out. He's got Arnold flanked out to his right. Kernu back in the lineup with the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> nice job there by the Mustangs Second flowing down. to the ball. Alec Pe Pellerin leading the way. Kernu's good to see Kernu back, back in the game. Good to see he's back in the game. Takes this ball, goes right outside his guard, and uh, the Mustangs were right there to take him down. Good job, number 50 there as well, flown from his linebacker position. It's going to be Blake Alain. Right, right, right. 
Again, St. John's had some success between the tackles, looking to pitch it outside now. Galbraith throwing on second down, pump fake. Nice catch there by Seal coming back to the ball. Yeah, that was a great job. Seal came back to the ball on that one to help his quarterback out. And uh, Galbraith was a little bit under pressure there, Chris, but uh, he, he pump faked that ball, stepped Passed into his throw, control, and uh, got the ball to, uh, to Seal. Again, I don't think that I think that pump fake was coming off his first read, checking down to to seal inside, but uh, some good composure there by Galbraith in the pocket. Lots of pressure around him, and he stood tall and delivered that ball. Bringing up third down here in about three yards. Oh, again to Deneen on the jet sweep here. He's got first down yardage, still on his feet. Taken down, <laughs> is that a D Lyman? 92, 92 right, and Gabe St. Germain carry. going sideline to sideline here. Again, watch Arnold come out of the backfield here. Take care, takes care of his block and Deneen just follows right behind him, picks up the first down. Good job, the halfbacks here by, uh, from the Mustangs Point looking to the turn that run inside. Oh, we oh, got a penalty. We got a flag on the play. Repeat third down. We had a hold on the play, Chris, and now we're going to go back ten yards and repeat third or repeat third down. So we're going to have both third and eight here. Maybe a passing situation now for the Wanderers. Galbraith, yeah, it's going to be a screen batted down again. You can see that setting up how the the old line lets that pressure come through. Looking to dump it off to uh, Kurt we'll underneath we'll that. The yeah, and the Mustangs were all over that. Sport. Mustangs sure sniffed it right out. Website, Very www. smart play by Galbraith, Galbraith there. Did you see what he did there, Chris? Up he up threw the ball. The ball got tipped up in the air, and the first thing he did was knock that ball down to the ground. Bat it down, yep. You know, that is a smart play. Last thing you want to do is tip it back up to get intercepted. <laughs> so this is going to bring up fourth down. St. John's been aggressive all day, keeping that offense out here on the field. Kerner's going to have balance formation, 22, over the middle. Ooh, almost picked off. Pass is incomplete. Well, the Mustangs are going to get the ball back here, Chris. I Again, I'm not 100% sure at this level of ball. Why not kick the field goal there? Make it a two-point game. But uh, Wanderers decided to go for it. They didn't convert. Here comes your Mustangs. Uh... Maybe it's their turn to put some momentum on their side with the ball. Well, that's the thing. The Mustangs' defense held strong here twice in a row against the uh, very aggressive St. John Wanders, who have gone for it on fourth down here twice, come away with no points. If I was the Mustangs at this point here, I would want to air it out on first down and just take a shot. Yeah. Where uh, you've got uh, St. John maybe in a bit of a lull. Let's see here as they come out. Well, watch Les watch for Leslie Green. Watch for Leslie Green. He's got the speed to get downfield. He spread it wide to the left. And, he's and that's looking. where that's where uh, Comfort's going. Oh. He didn't connect. We called it. That's we called it. We said down. that's where Second he was back. going to Leslie Green, and he just didn't get it to the outside where uh, Green could get underneath the ball. Basically threw it to the wrong shoulder there. Green could have ran a bit of a a corner to get those hips turned, but uh, unable to connect with Green. On first down, but again, not a bad call. Like the aggressiveness there. It's only second down. They've got uh, lots of horses here to move the move the ball and see if they can pick up some yardage and keep these chains moving. Ellis, I believe, here lined up behind Comfort. He gets the pitch. Nice cut. He gets it up. We get a late flag coming late in. Late flag coming flag in there. Great play by Ellis. So, do you see the speed and the power of him getting outside that guard and taking the ball up uh, up field? One cut, north south. Big gain, eight nine yards. Let's see if it's all for naught here. It looks like the Mustangs are walking back towards their end zone. Well, they're talking to the the referee and the umpire is talking to Blue. That's never good. Uh, that's never a good sign <laughs> for the offense. We have holding. On the offense, number three, 10 yard penalty. Holding against the Mustangs. Repeat second down. It's going to be second Brady Newcomb, point. slot receiver here for the Mustangs, who's been a key part of their run game. His blocking ability really impressed me last game here with uh, with the Mustangs. Not afraid to to come down and, and take on a linebacker. 
Comfort now second and 20. And still not on the same page here with Green, that pass. Third down. He was trying to go green there, but he was expecting Green to come back to the ball, Chris, and uh, they just weren't on the same page. Green Green never made any attempt to get back to that ball at the time it was thrown. And that's decent coverage on Green. I think Comfort was being careful with that throw to make sure it's not intercepted. Uh, pick six where he threw where, where St. John couldn't catch it, just Green unable to come back to it himself. But we, uh, some good coverage there by McGarvey. We have a long third down here. Now it's third and 15 here. You're going to see Comfort back, a little screen of their own underneath the Newcomb. He's going to be taken down just around the 30 yard line. That was almost a Gary Ross screen out of Mount A. Okay, Comfort complete to Brady. Newcomb. Gary Ross, you're digging deep into the. Uh, oh, I'm going into the memory banks here, but a little bit of a jailbreak screen. How uh, he basically fakes underneath, ten. cuts across, gets that short pass. And don't forget Brady Newcomb coming out of the slot receiver making that catch. This kid's a quarterback. He played quarterback for Moncton High School. Multi-talented. Uh, lots of former Moncton High Purple Knights here in the, the lineup for the Moncton Mustangs here this afternoon. I'm sure head coach Johnny Allenax in the stands here. Keeping an eye on his former players. As Ben George, another one of his former players, back to punt. Look at nice that kick up Look over. Sending Deneen back, off in corner. Touches it. And he's in trouble. Huge punt here by George. Ben really? George really got a hold of that one. That was a beautiful flight on that football. Well over Deneen's head. He could not find the ball, Chris. He was lucky to come up with the ball there. But I'll tell you, this game's all about momentum. You know that. And th that could have been the play right there to turn momentum in this game. And there's a late flag. Really late flag coming out here. I don't know if this is unsportsmanlike, possibly on St. John. But, uh, again, Moncton really just tilted field position, uh, moving St. John back here to their own 15-yard line. On the, con on the dead ball. That's a 10-yard first down, St. John. So yeah, we had objectionable conduct at the at the end of the play. It was obviously on a Moncton player. It's going to come up ten yards. Well, it's well, on Saint John. Oh, I think it's going back. Saint John. I think there may have been some. Yes, you're right, Chris. It's going back. Now. Going back on Saint John. The way We're the ref five yard line. <laughs> yeah. Objectionable conduct. The way the ref looked at the teams there it looked like he was going to assess that to Moncton, but. Uh, that's against St. John, and now they're tight. Moncton's got some great field position off that kick from Ben George. Again, special teams playing a huge part here in this game. St. John with the onside kick earlier in the game. Now a big punt here by Ben George. Backing St. John up in their five yard line. About eight minutes left here to go in the second quarter. Galbraith now in the pistol. And a hand off to Kernu, and he's stuffed up. That Moncton defensive line really starting to take control here. Moncton sniffed that play out right away, Chris, and you can see they're crashing the middle of that line. They Kernu know St. John's going to run this ball today with Kernu and Arnold in the in in the backfield. Uh, Moncton's playing that three-man front, and watch. Look at their linebackers. They're playing tight to that line of scrimmage as well. They're challenging St. John to run up the middle. You've got five guys in there. You're going to see Kernu, and they're bringing, they're bringing pressure. Nice completion there by Galbraith. Get the ball out quick. As he hooks up. That may have been Deneen here in the slot. Yeah, Moncton had five guys in deep on the deep Galbraith coverage on that, Chris. And when you put five guys of your defense, that's half of your defense up near that line of scrimmage, it's going to leave some one-on-one -on -one coverage like that downfield. Big time, yeah. St. John has five receivers, so if you're rushing five, as long as you have it blocked up, you're going to be able to find somebody with an opening. As Galbraith now again looking to pass. Going up high, oh, Deneen tried for the one-handed snag. But he was in some traffic, he was gonna take a pop. Here we go, Galbraith takes the ball downfield. He had him, he had him, Galbraith just, yep. or uh, Deneen couldn't get up to get a hold of that ball, Chris, but uh, I like this Galbraith. He is, uh, he's got lots of 
poise in that pocket, and he's he's not afraid to wait for the route to take take place downfield so he can get the ball out. And that's uh, like you said, he showed some poise in the pocket, standing tall, and really seeing that play develop before it happened. Let's see here. You're going to see Moncton with a single high safety look. They're going to hand it off inside to Kernu, and that's sniffed out here. Probably about a four yard gain. Kind of that's going to make it about three, third and seven. And seven. Third, third and seven. seven left to go here. Good run by Kernu. He went up between the guards, but listen, Moncton's playing five guys tight there. That running game is going to be tough for St. John, but they're. They got to keep pounding the ball. When you're on the road, you're up seven nothing. Keep pounding the ball. If you're St. John and you see Moncton crowding the box like they are, those linebackers are that tight. You got to run some misdirection <laughs> because right now they're just pinning their ears back. Nice grab there by number 80. I think that's Noel with the run after the catch as well. One-handed grab. Yeah, that was Nicholas Noel that That's caught that. And if you Nick saw Noel that again, you had five you had five defensive players by the Mustangs right up to the line of scrimmage there. Mustangs they ran a little play action pass. Moncton bit on it. Noel was open and Galbraith again. Showing that confidence, making that pass the downfield. Way. The Wanderers pick up the first down. And David That's a big first down to move those sticks after the field position. Moncton gained with that Ben George punt. 540. Left in the first uh, the first half. St. John looking to drive down here and possibly get some points on the board before half. St. John currently leading 7-0. As Galbraith back in the corner, pitch to Kernu. He's got a head of steam on the outside. That's a good run by Kerno there. He took it out to the short side of the field. And I don't know if you noticed, Chris, but prior to the play, guess what Moncton did? They dropped one of those linebackers out of there. They only had four in tight on that line of scrimmage, leaving some room for Kerno to break through Tyler and uh, pick up six, six yards on the four. play. Yeah, Cameron Bell backed out last minute, but again, misdirection or running to the outside. When you see those linebackers starting to cheat up and get tight to the line of scrimmage, that takes away their their sideline to sideline ability. A nice gain there on first down, second and about four here for the Wanderers. Galbraith back in the pistol. And stuffed there right away. Looks like number 30. Maury Camara, number 16, he really cut the he cut that outside edge off on that runner, so he couldn't get to the outside. He had to go to the middle, and the rest of the defense just swallowed him up there, Chris. Again, Mustangs bringing pressure here on second down, looking awesome to stop that play. run. And we third down. It's really important for those outside guys to be picking up or or, or cutting those uh, those alleyways off to the outside, eh? Exactly. You have contain. And force that run inside. Let's see if uh, Galbraith goes to the air here on third. And he does. Going up for seal. Jump ball. Unable to come down with it. That's a great no call by that the officials there, Chris. Both, both the defensive back and the wide receiver, they're both eligible to go up for that ball. They both did and neither came up with the ball. That was a great no call by the officials on that play. Indeed. You see seal go up for it. Almost a jump ball situation with Nathan Anderson, and then you see a Lunga number four coming over from that safety position. But that's uh, that's the right read, I think, for St. John, and good defense there by by the Mustangs. And St. John's going to come out to punt here for the first time. And again, you can hear them already identifying two onside guys here for the Wanderers. So. Wobbly kick handled by Ilunga. That seemed a long time to get that play off, didn't it, Chris? There, there, there seemed to be some confusion in that St. John backfield. And uh, when that punt finally got back there, just seemed to be a little bit of confusion on the St. John side of the ball on that play. I don't think they punt too often uh, in no. game situations. So. I, I think we just saw why. I think we yeah. just saw why they don't that do a whole lot of decline, punting. Change of possession, first down. Both the procedure is in St. John. It's declined. It'll so we had a penalty the on the play, but uh, that penalty's been declined. Moncton's going to take the ball, and guess what, Chris? 
for the first time this afternoon, Moncton's got the ball in good field position here. In St. John territory here at the St. John 50. Comfort uh, gonna be in the pistol here, see what he can do with it. He's gonna hand it off to Ellis up the middle. Nice run there by Ellis. I love this kid. This kid is fast, he's twisty, he, look at, picks up the ball, couple little moves there, gets between the guards and just puts on yards, puts on yards, Chris. This is a great I'll running back. The That's Moncton's game here, running between the tackles. It'll be first down for the Mustangs. Really a dominant offensive line here for the Mustangs. Showing off why. Ellis still behind Comfort here in the pistol. And a little play action as Comfort rolls out to his left, wide open. Play action to Akeem White. Nice play call. Very nice play call. Did you see he got that slot receiver to come up to the line, to make it look like it was a run. St. John bit on that play before he even uh, ran the play action pass. And by the time he faked that handoff, White was wide open for that pass downfield. I'm not sure what uh, the DB <laughs> on the wide side. Obviously a double move. But... Uh, he wasn't going to come up and stop uh, Comfort on a run, so. No, I, I think that DB, he bit on that slot receiver coming up to the line. As soon as that slot receiver came to the line, he thought it was a run play. He made the move for a run and uh, left his man wide open downfield. Extra point is good off the scoreboard. That so a tie the game. Seven, the Wanderers seven. 2.45 left in the first half. The Moncton Mustangs have a, a special big play action play here by Dan Comfort and the Moncton Mustangs. Current Mustangs captain and teammate Aubrey Ellis. As I think that's exactly what Moncton Jenny needed Wong to sort of take her hand have a marriage. big play here we are proud to get St. John back on their said, heels. Yes. Yeah, when you're the home team, you don't want to be going into halftime down, Chris. You want to you want to make uh, you want to try to get ahead in the first half for sure. And listen, the we we've seen. The Mustangs defense play big. We saw the, the special teams have a big play in this quarter. And now we've seen the offense finally put some points on the board. This is the this is what this is the momentum you want to take into halftime. We only got three minutes left to go in this half. That's uh that's the thing inside the three minute warning here. But uh, again the Moncton's defense stood tall on three uh, fourth down uh, attempts here by the Wanderers. And then a uh, big punt here by Ben George. Poor punt by the Wanderers, putting Moncton in good field position to pop a score in here before the end of the half. You see George kicking off here to Deneen. He brings it out. Still on his feet. He's at midfield at the 55. Oh, and a late flag here. St. John might, might have better field Bradley position Randy after this. Return. They may have better field Flag position, but I'll tell you one thing. You never want to see this as a special teams coach, or a head coach for that matter, but on a kickoff, I love when I see the kicker make the tackle at midfield. Ben George with the tackle on that play. Good to have an athlete as a kicker, not afraid to stick his nose in there. But again, uh, with the with only play, We have unnecessary roughness on Moncton. Number 24, 15 yard the penalty. First down. So it's it's a 10 yard penalty, a 15 yard penalty, and that's the roughness. Up. That's uh, against Kyle McGraw, another Moncton Purple Knight. What's all the knack teaching him over there? Holy jeez. Penalty here on the Mustangs, putting St. John inside the 40 yard line here with two minutes left. Great field position to answer back to Moncton's big score here. Moments ago. Another flag comes in here as Kern who runs between the tackles for a game of about Tyler three. We have a flag, flag on that play, play, and that's going to be holding on the St. John line. It was the... Uh, Five, three. So it's three. three. You're going to see Moncton continue to bring pressure up the middle. Yeah, they're... they're, they're they're playing the run right now, Chris. They're playing the run heavy. Holding on the offense. Yeah. Number 52. Holding against 10-yard penalty. It'll be first, first down. 10-yard penalty. We're going back 10 yards. It's first down. 
Now this puts St. John in a little bit of a situation they don't want to be in at this point of the game, Chris, because there's two minutes and 31 seconds left to go. They would have liked to burn some time off, but uh, it's going to be tough to do that with it being first and 15. I think St. John now just looking to get a first down. It's Galbraith to the outside. Nice pickup. Going to be Seal again. Joel Seal again gets... This kid's got great hands, Chris. And uh, again, Galbraith poised in that pocket, looking for his men, found found Seal and got the ball down to him. So now you got second, second and, and eight. Second and seven, second and eight. That was a great pickup on that uh, first play. Yeah, this, this is second and manageable. This is exactly what you wanted on that first down drive for, for Galbraith is now you can sort of read the Moncton defense here. Back in the pocket again, going back to Seal. Ooh. As Galbraith ends up on his That's back this time. Bobby McIntyre, he's got eyes for balls. Number six for the Mustangs. He loves getting after those interceptions. He, uh, he's had a few this season for the Mustangs. And uh, he, was, he saw the ball coming there. He was doing everything he could to get to that ball. Playing the corner this afternoon is McIntyre. Elunga as well here for the Mustangs, number four. Playing safety, had a number of interceptions this year as well. That whole Moncton defensive backfield, pretty athletic. It's Galbraith again, going back. This time to Deneen on an out. Pass is incomplete, that brings up fourth down. Now you're gonna see fourth down here for the Wanderers. And after seeing them punt last time, I think I know why they're gonna go for it on fourth. Yeah, they're gonna go for it on fourth. Again, didn't he, uh, Galbraith had time to get the ball downfield there, but his his wide receiver just didn't get the uh, separation from the uh, from the defensive player there to, to complete that pass. With how aggressive their linebackers have been, I'm surprised they haven't run any crossers yet. Yeah. To sort of see if those uh, linebackers are going to jump up. Galbraith now on fourth down. He's looking to his right to seal. There's seal again. Nice completion. He may have enough. For a first as he falls backwards, and that's going to move the sticks for the Wanderers just as we get under two minutes here in the first half. Big fourth down pickup here for the Wanderers as that extends the drive, moves the sticks, and puts them just outside the 20-yard line here looking to knock it on the door to add more points here before half. Yeah, they've got they've got Bobby McIntyre, number six for the Mustangs, playing one-on-one -on -one coverage with Seal. And uh, the Mustangs might want to make some type of uh, coverage uh, uh, adjustment and, and get a second man over there to help McIntyre out. Man it up all game is tough to do as they try to pitch here to Kernu. That goes nowhere, a loss of yards. Oh, and a late flag here. Flag down on the play. That's objectionable conduct against the Mustangs. Ooh. So we're going to be going up 10 yards from the end of the play. I don't know if that was something said on the sideline. That's going to put St. John in really good field position here, 15 yards. No, that's a 10-yard penalty. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, hold on. That going to dead ball, period. Move. We have objectionable conduct. Seven block. Yeah. Ten yards. Ten yards. Ten yards. Second down. Ten yard penalty, and that's going to be second down. Conduct against the Mustangs. The down the, down. the downs box, Chris, had moved prior to uh, or moved prior to he was uh, supposed to, which is why there was a little confusion on the sideline there with the uh -huh. sticks. Okay. Beautiful. So now second down. In good territory, and even bigger, the player that uh, penalty was against. Uh, the Mustangs taking off the field here, so one of the better linebackers here for the Mustangs. Galbraith now going to the air, fourth down, crossing, we're almost picked off. A bit of contact there on Deneen as he came across, but yeah, good Den coverage. Deneen was looking for the flag there, Chris. He, uh, he had coverage right on top down. of him, but uh, I don't know if there was enough coverage there to... Uh, you know, to, to cause a flag to be thrown on that play, but he was looking for one. He was looking for one. He was hoping for one, but like I said, I think it was more good coverage than 
Although than any in, infraction. I mean, really, I mean, when you look at it, how often are players not looking for flags, <laughs> right? I'm an official. I know this. <laughs> I know this. He's just planting the seed for second half here. But Galbraith again now, third down. And he's going to the end zone. Oh! Ball bounces around. Galbraith stood That's in there looking to complete that. He did stand down. in there, and he took a he took a hit delivering that pass. He took a big hit there from number 69 from the Mustangs, and he uh, he knocked him down to the ground pretty hard. But good for him to stand in there and try to deliver that ball into a crowd. Into a crowd. Again, thought he had him on that out route there at the goal line. That brings up fourth down. Fourth down here, Chris. Are they going to try to kick the field goal? Looks like they're going to try Looks to like kick. Looks like they're going to try to take the points here. A minute 22 left in the half. That's smart. The question will be whether they can convert this. Looks like Iunga's back to uh, retrieve this kick if it uh, happens to miss. And he's uh, a dangerous returner. He could take this back to the house. Low kick. Wide left. He picks it up. He's got it out of the end zone. He's going to be taken down there by the Wanderers. So good not to concede the single point. We got a flag down in the middle of the field here by our umpire. We'll wait to see the call. Looks like it's going to be holding on the return team on the return. Let's see the official speaking with the blue captain. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's holding on the return team. So that's going to back the Mustangs up here under their own goal post. The Join the plate. We have holding on the receiving team. That's a 10-yard penalty. Just respect it. First down, Moncton. It'll be first down for the Mustangs. The key thing on that, Chris, is the ball's kicked into the end zone. The Mustangs need to get it on the end zone to uh, avoid giving up one point on the Rouge. Once he gets the ball out of the end zone, that's when the, the when the holding call's made, the big question is, where's the ball? The mm -hmm. ball was out of the end zone, so like he said, it's a restricted penalty. They go back half the distance to the goal line from where the play ended, and it'll be first down for your Mustangs. Exactly. If that holding call was in the end zone, would that have resulted in the Rouge? Yes, then exactly. you would have had a one point. There would have been options on that play. There would have been options if the, if the uh, penalty was called while it was in the end zone. Minute and 10 seconds here for the Mustangs to work before the end of the first half. Let's see how aggressive they are here coming out of their own end. Well, they avoided points. There's a minute and 10 seconds. There's lots of time for them to take a shot downfield with this ball. You're going to see Leslie looks, Green. Looks like Leslie Green has one-on-one -on -one coverage. With McGarvey down here, the near sideline. Trips to the right. Comfort looking for Green. He curls it up. And the great, 10 yards. the great thing about the three-minute rule in Canadian football, Chris, is the clock is going to stop after yeah, every play here now. Green, Once the ball's set and South. the referee's ready to go, he'll wheel it in here because the play ended. But but the key thing is, is because that clock stops on every play, it gives this Mustangs team time here to put some points up. A minute and ten seconds, a lot longer than you think it is. Once you're inside the, the three-minute rule. That, second down. that attempt there for Brady Newcomb. Knocked away nicely there by McGarvey. But you can see how they hooked first play, same formation. They hooked it up with Green. Second time they tried to go over the top here with Newcomb. Yeah. Good coverage there by the Wanderers. Let's see if uh, the Mustangs take another shot deep. Either with Green number number uh, nine, who's going out far to the wide side of the field, or 14, Akeem White here down here in the near side sideline. Oh, up the seam. Nice completion there. Number 23, Tory Hicks. Tory Hicks. And, and, and he's and looking to the short side of the field on all three of those uh, passes there. There must be something they see in the defense that uh, this short side of the field's working for them. What's interesting, the safety, number 15 for St. John, crowded that play and then dropped at the last minute. 
Seal doing double duty here for the Wanderers as he's lined up at safety. Ooh. Looks like Morley in space. Joel Seal, who's yeah, had such great two, hands as wide receiver. That's, that's, that's who they're going style. after right now, Chris. If you watch, he's 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 lining up tight on the coverage and then dropping out at the last second. And as he's dropping out, the receiver they're going to is that guy. Well, you're going to see the inside receiver in the trips here going to be Morley. He's running to the, uh, the flat. They got Green hooking up in the zone, running into his own player. And you can see that's basically a, a layered play where you have a short option, a medium option, and, and then a deep option Green. for comfort. So he's just reading. The Mustangs first down. This is a great drive for the Mustangs. This kind of drive is going to give comfort the confidence that he needs in his passing game. And he's just made three or four really solid passes downfield here. We have a timeout on the field here, Chris, but he's really made three or four solid passes that are building his momentum or building his confidence as this game goes on. A big confidence builder, but would be all for naught here if the Mustangs don't come away with points. 36 seconds left here in the half. 36 seconds, and they're around the 31-yard line of the uh, Wanderers. So you've got a couple shots here to the end zone. First down, so you can you still have the option to move the chains here as well. And you can use the middle of the field, like you said here, where the clock doesn't restart until the ball is spotted. But a good break here for both teams. Refocus the defense. Get the play calls in you want here for your offense here if you're the Mustangs have to hand it out to the crowd that showed up for this game today. There's a good crowd here at Rocky Stone for this football game and a mix of both Mustangs and Wanderers fans here, Chris. Good crowd support for both teams. Certainly helps that the sun is shining. Oh, pressure up the middle by St. John. Oh, big hit! On green, or is that white? But McGarvey laying the lumber for the Wanderers. No flag on that play there, Chris. That's I need a good hit. That was a good hit, but was he there early on this play? I, that's the question I have on this one. Uh, from standing up here, it, it'll, I'd love to see the replay if we can get it. He looked a little early on that play. Might here we go. to see it here. Akeem White. Ball's uh, there. That's a good hit. That's a good hit that's by McGarvey. Hit. Almost caused the interception. Oh, trying again. Up the seam to Newcomb. This is incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, McGarvey tackle. He timed that tackle perfect on that last reception. Uh, from up here in the booth, he looked like he was a little early, but uh, that was that's the, the, the exact time that you want to be hitting the wide receiver when the ball is coming. Good defense there by the Wanderers. Let's see. Moncton's been hitting these seam routes here a little bit with their slots. Surprised their halfbacks haven't been jamming them off the line here. Forcing Comfort to hold the ball. Some tight coverage. Comfort again. Going deep. Just out of the reach of White there. Safety for the Wanderers. Joe Seal lurking in the area. Yeah, Seal was right there. He was uh, backing out and he was uh, looking for that play. And uh, there was a guy open. Just Comfort led him a little bit too much there. Yep, and that's uh, Seal in there for his his uh, ball hawking abilities more so than his tackling, but uh, that's exactly what you want. Well, we've seen the we've seen the hands that this guy's got as a wide receiver. What a great guy to have in your backfield, uh, you know, for those types of plays. Just like putting Gronkowski back there. And <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna see the Mustangs lining up for a field goal. George has got the leg. Two return guys back here for the Wanderers if he happens to. Miss wide. They bring it out. Appears to have been wide to the left. So good job by Seal getting it out of the end zone to avoid conceding that point. But 12 seconds left here in the first half. Both teams still tied here, seven points apiece. Return by St. John with some uh, first down for the Wanderers. Really exchange here of, of missed field goals and a couple opportunities. Both teams here had to really take uh, take a lead. Well, we've got 12, second, 12 seconds left in this quarter, Chris, or in this half. So my guess is you're going to see St. John come out here and probably just take a knee and end this half. 
taking a, a 7 7 score into the locker room at halftime. Which I think, if you're Moncton, you're happy to go in tied at 7 7. But if you're St. John, you left a few points on the field here in the first half uh, where you were on inside the 10 yard line here in a couple of fourth downs that, uh, that you're unable to convert. So again, just going to kneel out the, the first half are the Wanderers. I don't know if you saw that on this play here. This is very interesting. Uh, they, they called, uh, they were taking for a knee. Yep. Now in this league, when they call for a knee, no player is allowed to cross the line of scrimmage at any point. There was a missed snap on that uh, snap to take the knee. Mm -hmm. The ball was loose on the ground. In the, if this was an AUS football game, that would have been chaos right there, Chris. That would have been chaos. That would have been and a live ball dog pile right there. <laughs> the Wanderers, seven. Well, that's why they let the referees sort Coles those out. Unstock the pile. But there you the have it, folks. Seven-seven tie the game. After the first half here at Rocky Stone Field. Sunny Saturday afternoon here in Moncton, New Brunswick. We'll be right back after this break. Don't forget to pick up your 50-50 tickets available at the front gate. Get me drawn in the fourth quarter. And welcome back here to Rocky Stone Field in Moncton, New Brunswick, as we get ready here for second half action between the first place St. John Wanderers and the second place Moncton Mustangs here as we get ready for kickoff. Ben George teeing it off for the Mustangs, kicking deep to the Wanderers as they bring it out with speed. That's number eight, Daniel Bell. Daniel Bell bringing that ball out. He gets it to the 35, Chris. That's how we're going to start the second half. So we went Daniel into Bell halftime 7-7 seven to seven in a very John. tight ball game that we saw in that first uh, half. Chris, walk me into the locker room. What are these coaches talking to these players about at halftime? Well, I think for, for both teams, halftime is just basically about your adjustments and what, what you have to, to work on here from the first half. Moncton, hey, got some good defensive pressure. Uh, like I said, offensively now, got to sustain some drives, what they want to work on, what they want to adjust to, what St. John is doing. Same thing on the St. John side. Left a few points on the board offensively, how you want to attack this Mustang defense and what you got to do on defense to get some stops. So St. John going back to what was working for them, and that's a nice handoff here to Kernu. Right up the middle, Chris. He takes it right between the guards. And uh, St. John's going to continue with running the ball. Uh, looks like uh, they had success in the first half. They're going to continue that in the second half. Again, I think a lot of it's adjusting to that frontier uh, from the Mustangs, where they really had five guys stacked in there tight. So some of it's just schematically who you want to get on your double team, get to second level. So Jeremy Jowdry, head coach here for the Wanderers. Looks like he was on the chalkboard here at halftime. Has a nice little pitch here to Kernu as he gets out of bounds. Landed kind of awkwardly as he fell. Yeah, he's getting a little up. He's getting up a little gingerly after that uh, tack on the sideline. But look at the outside. Finds some space and just keeps pushing that rock up the sideline, Chris. That's a first down for your Wanderers. Big first down. Uh, and again, attack starting to attack the edges here of that Mustang defense, which is what they have to do, what they saw, like you said, uh, at halftime. Uh, Moncton really stacking the interior of that box uh, to stop Kerner who between the tackles and he's going off to the sideline. So he's a little shaken up there after that tackle. So just when you have <laughs> your halftime plan set, you lose your tailback. We'll see how the Wanderers here uh, adjust wow. under center and I'm sure for head coach Jason Terrace here with the Mustangs, again you got to be happy with how your defense played especially up front. Now it's going to be okay adjusting on the fly here to what new wrinkle St. John comes out with. We did see a little wildcat here in the first quarter from the Wanderers, which Moncton handled quite well. Nice little hitch pass here. Number 80, that's Noel. Noel caught that pass, but uh, that was a little screen pass, but uh, the Mustangs were all over that, Chris. They didn't bite on it, 
And uh, they were in position, and uh, it's going to be yards, second and approximately ball. nine yards to go for that first down. And you can see the Mustangs did a good job of getting off their blocks. They're again a bit of a screen pass to Noel, but uh, he had three defenders there on him pretty quickly with three Wanderers looking around, seeing why they missed their blocks. But again, that's a dangerous pass as well, because if that's a backwards pass, that can be a live ball if he happens to, uh, to drop it. But back to that power run game. That's number 30 again. Number 30, Josh Brown coming in. Remember, we talked about this kid earlier. He can come in and pound that ball too for the Wanderers. And he did just that on the backside of Arnold in between the tackles right up for about six yards. I like how he finished that run as well. Obviously an extra couple yards leaning forward. On that run, Arnold 49, the big fullback here. Flex to the right, Deneen in motion. The handoff again underneath the Mustangs. Snuffed that out pretty easily. And again, they've been dominant between the tackles. Surprise, St. John's gone back to. Well, you had Gabriel St. Germain, Ben Dunstan, and Brandon Caldwell all stop that play right at the line of scrimmage. Watch uh, Arnold. He gets down. He gets lost here a little bit. Do you see that, Chris? And uh, that, that allowed Moncton to get right in and swallow that play up. So as dominant as a as a as a fullback as he is, you could see he got lost on that last play. When you're standing around with nobody to block, that means the guy running the ball is getting killed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> as we see Galbraith now back to pass, nice uh, slant in there by Seal. Takes a shot on the way down. I think we're going to see an extra head-to-head -head contact here as the flag is out. Yeah. The, it, down, the way things stand right now, he's got a first down. Just so you know. But the flag is down. Seal looks like he's a little shaken up on the play here, Chris. Uh, the referees are going to sort this out. It looks like we're going against the defense for exactly what you just talked about, that helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot there. You can see on the replay there, Seal took a shot to the side of the head from, I believe, number 16, Mori Kamara. And Seal's going off the field. He should be okay. You got to remember, Chris, at every level of football now, including this level, we really want to see the helmets out of the game. So the officials are going to be watching uh, for those kinds of hits on the field. I thought they were going to show a replay here, but uh, again, you could t t see uh, the helmet to helmet contact there. Um, and, and like I said, Seal taking a quick hey, break here from the on game. The defense. Shot to the head, 15 yard penalty, first down. And there you have it, shot to the head. Unnecessary roughness against Moncton. It'll be first down for St. John. And there you have St. John after a nice kickoff here by the Mustangs. Already back in Mustang territory here, uh, just uh, at the 21 yard line. With a first down. And Kernu back in the backfield here behind Galbraith. And they go back to that pitch. Good job there by the Mustangs, stiffing that out. I think that's Blake Elaine, number 50. Great job there. That would Ben Dunstan. Look at Ben Dunstan on this play. He really right, He down really down played a big boss. factor for those uh, linebackers able to get to the ball there. Dunstan, good, great agility for a big man inside by number 50, Blake Elaine. Great job getting upfield, forcing that run inside. Is he cutting off that edge? So St. John had a bit of success getting to the outside here earlier. Let's see if they try any misdirection on the Mustangs. Galbraith under center again, looking to throw. Completed out to the flat. Nicholas Noel picked up that ball, Chris. And it looks like it's going to be third down. Third down and approximately 10. Um, so he got the pass off, didn't get the yards that he was hoping on that play. The Mustangs were able to sniff that out. And now they've brought up a long third down here. Short completion for uh, for the Wanderers, but again, third down. We've seen that St. John, this is pretty much four down territory for them. Let's see if uh, Galbert looks out to the left. Looks like a false start on St. John. Ball's completed, but left tackle moved early here. It, it sure looked like it. Do, yeah, I don't see a flag on the field. Maybe they got away uh, with one there. They but got away uh, with one. There was definitely a jump there. Here. Fourth and three. Arnold motioning. Yep. 
Yeah, there was definitely, that should have been a flag on that play. That's a nice completion out to number eight. We got a fourth down and about four to go. And there's no Joe Seal out there, remember. And that's his go-to receiver in these type of situations. Five-man line. Looks like they're running the ball here. Fourth and five. High formation. Kernu's back there. Play action. Oh, Galbraith rolling to his right. Throws it up. Oh, flags fly. May have been some pass interference. Flags out on the play. At least two flags down on the play there. Yeah, watching that play, Chris. Look at the Mustangs. They get all... Yeah, there's definitely pass interference there on number four. Number four... Uh, That's a young guy. Aling Alinga? Alunga. Alunga. Definitely pass interference there. He, uh, he made contact well before that ball was uh, in the area. It looked like Galbraith pass was going for... D4. 15 yard. That's interference against the Mustangs. It'll be first down for St. John. He said Ionga doing a good job in coverage, just not allowing that St. John receiver to come back to the ball, which he has the right to do. So pass interference, that's going to put the ball on the one yard line. It's going to be first down at the one yard line. The referee's mic broke up a little bit there, but he definitely said pass interference on number four on the Mustangs. You're going to see that big set here again by the Wanderers. Galbraith under center, high formation. Kern who's up. Oh, he's stuffed. The one, the Mustangs pushing him back. Yeah, he uh, tried to find it. He tried to follow Arnold right into that uh, end zone here. Watch, oh, he goes Kern right in on the backside. But Arnold didn't get across the goal line. He didn't pound that. He, that fullback has got a pound across the uh, goal line. He kind of hesitated going into the goal line. There. And that's uh, that thing, Arnold, for as big as he is, is basically running straight up. If he drops his hips there and runs with authority, uh, you know, Kern is still running out the back. Yeah, <laughs> past, absolutely. Past the, the scoreboard here. But you're going to see Kern, same play, opposite side, number 30. He's short again. He stretched out for it, but he still came up short. That's going to be, you can see Arnold, 49, leading him in. But good penetration there. It'll be Looks like 36 down. by the Mustangs. And in Canadian Colby football, McLennan. in Canadian football, Chris, even if he gets inches from the goal line, that ball goes back on the one. Yep. Goes back on the one yard line. So they've got a full yard they got to take against this defense. Now they only need the nose of the football to break the plane. Trips to the right here. Arnold under center, and he QB sneaks it in as they go power football. That was a good play by the Wanderers there. That's going to put St. John back on top, 13-7. Again, trying to go big man football. You're going to see the Wanderers, different formation, Arnold under center. Look at the power of this guy. Look at the power of this guy. He, <laughs> he took three or four guys with him there, Chris, and carried that ball into the end zone. He is a big boy. He's a powerhouse. Putting St. John back on top. As we see here, if the Wanderers can convert this extra point. I re I recently referenced him uh, with the name The Bus. Oh, really? I, I recently uh, referenced him with the, the name the bus. the bus. I don't know if, uh, if, if that's, you know, fully uh, justified, but I tell you, he's the size of a bus, Chris. He's the size of a bus. A big man with good feet. It's the staff and rehab one that gets and the again, really, with two you know, unselfishly doing a lot of lead blocking here for Kernu as a fullback and uh, ran a bit of wildcat earlier and then basically under center here to uh, QB sneak that into the uh, end of the end zone, short yardage, as opposed to trying to even hand it off. Just put your big man under center and, and get him across the line. So That's it. Arnold getting the Wanderers back on top here with... 7.31 left to go in the third quarter. As we get ready here for the Wanderers kickoff. They've gone onside the two <laughs> kickoffs we had here in the first half. So interesting to see what, uh, what kind of strategy they have here in the third quarter. See the Mustangs lining up fairly tight here to midfield if there is a pooch kick. Well, Sam Peterson's lining up to kick this ball off again. It'll be 
Very interesting to see if we see this kick go deep. But the Mustangs have everybody up near the uh, restraining line, Chris, to see if uh, he kicks it short again. That's the thing you've got. And this time he kicks it away. It's going to be White, who's dangerous. Oh, nice job. Number 20 for the Wanderers. Good coverage on specials. That's Cody Reed getting in there and making that big tackle on special teams. I didn't think the Wanderers were going to come out, Chris, and try that uh, little pooch kick to the uh, side of the field again there. I figured they were going to have to kick that away, but uh, the Wanderers got down there, and uh, Cody Reed made that tackle to uh, keep the Mustangs on their side of the field. That's the thing. So inside the 35-yard line, definitely not uh, not great starting position for the Mustangs, but let's see what Dan Comfort does here. Late player coming on the field here. Let's see if the, the Wanderers are a man short. Swing pass out to Newcomb. He's got some room. Picks up a good solid eight yards. Yeah, there was a little bit of motion here on the short that side of the field. And uh, then then Pick Comfort turned, found Newcomb on the three. wide side of the field. And uh, they picked up seven yards on that play, Chris. It's going to be second and three. Good job there. Again, some of those lateral passes or backwards passes if he doesn't catch that ball it's a live ball which can be recovered from the opposing team and now I think we have Caldwell here maybe declaring himself eligible oh nice moves by Morley late flag coming out let's see if that comes back we got a we got a late flag coming out Check out the uh, Mustangs. They got a player number 89 just coming out of uh, injured reserve, and that's uh, Taylor Burns. Uh, and and the block he made there was what allowed Morley to get down downfield for that play. My question is, I wonder if they have him on the hold downfield after he made the initial block. And it sure looks like they're marching it off that way, Chris. Play is going to be yeah, against the Mustangs block. on the offense. Number 23, that's a 10-yard penalty. Nice. That's going to be outside one of the receivers. That's Tory Hicks. Hicks Tory Hicks, Hicks that was charged with the illegal block. So Taylor Burns, again, he made a huge block in the middle of that, uh, the middle of the guards there that allowed uh, Morley to get downfield. We're going to have to watch as they use that uh, formation throughout this second half. You're going to see the Mustangs will have a fourth lineman Usually in play, you're going to see him here flex to the left. He's usually going to come in and, and lead as a fullback. Kicks out a blocker there. But Morley wrapped up in the backfield. And St. John bringing some pressure off the edges. You're going to see it. Number 42 here coming down. Again, that's a zone block by the Mustangs. Coming off the double team. But a good job there by the Wanderer defense. Stuffing them here, bringing them up third and about 14. Comfort's going to be back here in the pistol. I think he's got Morley out here in the flat. They got him out in space. Nice tackle there, number 25. That's Colin Slay. Colin Slay saw that uh, hitch pass coming out to uh, Morley, and he got right in there. And one of the things you want from your defensive backs, we talked about this earlier, but when your defensive back can make the initial tackle uh, and take the ball carrier down to the ground, that's what you want on a defense. And because of Colin Slay, the Mustangs are bringing out their punter here and see what Ben George can do here, kicking I, with the wind. George booned one earlier here in the first half, which really flipped field position. That's a good kick. Going to be returnable. That's Bell. Bell getting upfield. Good tackle by number 23 of the Mustangs, and they uh, bring that uh, they bring Bell down on the 50, 50 and a half yard line. 
And it's going to be first down for the Wanderers. Just about a midfield. Tory Hicks on that tackle. But that uh, that Mustang, they like that flare pass, especially to the tailback, almost like a sweep pass. Instead of handing it off to your tailback, you're getting it to him through the air in space. Good I, job there by the the Wanderers to basically shut that down. Exactly. But, you know, when you've got third and long like that, and you've got a guy with the speed of Leslie Green, don't you take a shot there? I mean, if you know you're going to be punting if you don't get the first down, why not take a shot downfield to Leslie Green and see what he can do? I would basically throw to Leslie Green until they triple covered him and <laughs> had to go somewhere else. A big target for the Mustangs, but the Wanderers now back under center, and there's some nice moves by Kernu. Some he, good feet for a big man. He is shifty for a big man, isn't he? We talked about this kid last year. He felt last year that uh, he was slighted by the league, that he should have been the MVP running back for last year, but it was given to Aubrey Ellis. And for a big man, this guy can pound the ball, Chris. He can pound the ball. They pounded the ball there, but he's coming out of the game. May have injured a wrist or an, a shoulder there. He might, just, the big man just need a, he might need a breather. That was a big. That was a big run for a big man. That was a big. That was a big run, but I do think he's uh, he's favoring his left arm there. Josh Brown's back in as the uh, running back now. And see Noel in motion, and Brown is met three yards deep. Wow! Pressure there by the Mustangs. Wow! Ninety-two. That's uh, Gabriel St. Germain. I, I don't even think he had a blocker on him, Chris. It looked like he came free and clear there. Uh, again, they're basically shooting gaps, and St. Germain's having himself a game here this afternoon. Along with that uh, Mustang defensive line, you can see head coach uh, Jason Terrace calling in the play here for the defense. But they have definitely brought pressure here against this St. John front. Galbraith now looking to pass. He's going deep for Seal. Oh, good coverage. Inside position. Seal went up over top for it. They both have a uh, right to that ball. This is incomplete. Bring up third the down. DB was looking for pass interference there on this play. and He had a chance for a good job by Seal to knock that away. You know what? On that play, that defensive back... I know he's looking for the flag on that plate, but he's got to make a bigger fight for that ball. If you want that call, Chris, yeah. you've got to make a bigger fight for that ball, and he just didn't fight for it, and that's why there was no flag on that play. DB was almost waiting for that ball to come down to him as opposed to going up and getting it at the highest point. So this is going to be third and 12 for the Wanderers just inside midfield. Galbraith balls out quick. Oh, just out of the reach. Of Bell, and he knows it. He's, yeah. he's telling Galbraith, I should have ran that to the sideline on the out. And and, and Galbraith kind of rushed that one. We've been talking all game about the fact that this kid's poised. He's he's confident. That one came out a little little quick, a little early, Chris. That was a little on unchar uh, character for, uh, for Galbraith there. They're going to be going for it here on fourth. I think that's a little bit of almost he's thrown to a spot. He says, okay, I know you got to run this out. This is where you should be. And he, uh, Bell just sort of hooked it up as opposed to continuing that route onto the sideline. But here we go, fourth down. Look at this. Empty for backfield. Me. Ooh, nice pickup. And oh, is that Bell? He makes up for it with a first down and a late hit out of bounds. As the Wanderers pick it up on fourth down. Huge call, but look at this pass block look at this right here up the gut. Boom. That was uh, that was number thirty. That was Josh Brown. That uh, that was a little chip by Arnold, and then Josh Brown came in with that big block. And then you're right. We had a catch and, and on a late hit out of bounds. That was a really tight call on that out of bounds well, hit. Well, Moncton. But that's a ten yard penalty, and we're going down downfield ten yard for an extra ten yards. It's going to be first down for the Wanderers, Chris. So that was a fourth and fourteen where the Wanderers basically picked up 24 yards <laughs> when you add on the, the uh, penalty. So it's gonna be first down here around the 15 yard line here, the Mustangs. This Mustang defense has been game all day, but they have been on the field here for the large part of uh, this three quarters here so far. Two minutes, 13 seconds remain in the third quarter here, Rocky Stone. 
14-7 for the Wanderers. And this is a big play for the Mustangs. You're down 14 to 7 right now, Chris, and they don't want to get this uh, they don't want to get too far behind. It's only 2 minutes left to go in the third quarter, but uh, they've got to try to find a way to stop points being put on the board here. This front 5 here for the Mustangs really taking it to the the offensive line here of the Wanderers this second half. You can see Arnold now sort of flexed out. They're going to run inside. Nice physical run there by... Oh, and another flag. Got another flag. And another one. Oh, we got some pushing and shoving going on right. down there, Chris. There was a late hit there on the, the runner. Yeah, number four for the Mustangs. Alunga. Uh, Alunga came in there, and uh, he put a late hit on there. Somebody didn't like that. And then we got a little pushing and shoving, and... We're going to let our, our fellow, uh, my fellow uh, officials <laughs> sort this out. You're going to see here, big number 30 going down. Bit of a late hit. Wasn't, uh, I don't know if it was a spear per se, but some extracurriculars here after the play for sure. Obviously some frustration growing, especially when you've been on the field as long as both of these units have been. Look, this is the Mustangs and St. John. These two cities... When it comes to football, Chris, they don't like each other a whole lot. <laughs> whether it's high school, whether it's men's seniors league, uh, whenever St. John and Moncton's on a football field together, you know it's going to be a tough, tight, competitive football game. And there's going to be a few words exchanged during the game. Definitely a rivalry here between these two squads. Especially St. John, the defending MFL champion. Is in prime position here to add to their lead with two minutes left here in the third quarter. We have multiple fouls on the plate. We have unnecessary on the offense, unnecessary roughness on the defense. Those penalties offset. We have objection. We have a, another unnecessary roughness against the offense. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Wow, and that works out in the Mustangs' favor. As offsetting fouls plus an objectionable on St. John. We just talked oh, about how important it was for this defense to hang tough and stop points from going on the board. Well, whatever took place down there in that pile, Chris, the Mustangs must have kept their composure at some point because we didn't have two offsetting unnecessary roughnesses. So that's a great start uh, for the Mustangs to, to stopping points being put up on the board here. Now in bit more precarious position here Galbraith second down and and 20 here to go and he's gonna go to the air holds the ball oh, and almost intercepted as he was trying to find Arnold leaking out of the backfield Pass is incomplete. That brings but that's number ball. seven number seven had Linebacker. that ball number seven had that ball in his hands and wasn't able to come up with that. Now, unfortunately, on our score sheet, I don't have a number seven, but that number seven used to be worn by Mustangs alumni, Terry Vino. Vino would have made that catch and taken <laughs> it for the house back in the day. Surprised that number's not retired. Holy jeez. But he played at Moncton High here as well. Oh, quick drop here by Galbraith. Got it out early. Flag on the play? No? No flag on the play. That was a good play by that defensive back. He held up a little bit, waited for that ball to get there, and then he knocked that ball out of the receiver's hands. That's going to bring up fourth down, Chris. And look at special teams for the St. John Wanderers have not been that strong to this point in the ball game, other than their onside or their 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 uh, kickoff formation. Uh, this will be int real interesting to see. This would be. Uh, this is going to be, it looks like they're around the 20 yard line. So this is going to be about a 22 yard kick if he can convert on this. 22 yards here for Peterson. Both teams have missed a field goal here today. St. John already leads 14 7, looking to make this a two score game. Oh, big rush, that's blocked. And in the end zone here. Recovered by St. John, that could be a touchdown. Where it's blocked, it's touched. 
Let's see what the call is. It looked to me, Chris, now I, I need to see the replay on this, but to me it looked like a St. John player pulled a Mustang player away from that ball as the ball was loose on the ground. I really want to see the the replay here. Going into the so, end zone. All right, we got a loose ball here. Which has been touched on the kickoff, so he's making a tackle basically falling to the ball. And that's 49, by 49 comes up with it there, but... If that is blocked at the line of scrimmage, is that not a live ball that can be recovered by any team? That's a live ball, and you cannot pull a player away from that's a that's loose ball interference. I want to see what these officials are discussing here. St. John's not happy with whatever they've discussed. And where that's an extra point, that's a, d a dead play. St. John frustrated well, here, it that, looks like, by the call. That, that was on a field goal. That was oh, a field right. goal. That is a field so goal. So this could be points. This is a big decision here. They're, they're having a conversation with the captains right now. And whatever's decided here, I'm sure the head coaches are going to want to hear the explanation on this as well. There's no flag on the play, though. Keep that in mind. There was no flag on this play. For interference going for a loose ball. Uh, yeah, if, if anything, there was no orange on the field at the end of this play. Do they just call this dead and re-kick, or what's the uh, outcome here going to be? Oh, yeah, they it. You listen, you come. <laughs> we have no yards because the kick crossed the line of scrimmage. It's a five-yard penalty. It'll be first down for Moncton on the 15. Wow, that's wow. right. So because the ball was blocked, that automatically is a punt downfield. Okay? So there was no yards on the play because the receiver's got to have a five-yard restraining zone at the time that he gets to the ball. And as you can see, he's being tackled as he gets to the ball. That's why we had the no yards yeah, penalty. Called. So that basically, once that was blocked, it turned into a punt. That's right. For that the returner. Great conversation by this crew because, again, there was no flag on the play. So that was a great conversation by this crew to get it right. And this is right. They've, they've come up with the right decision. First down for your Mustangs. Although St. John's not happy with the decision. Moncton lucky to come away with no points given up on that drive. As it remains a one-score game here, 14-7 for the Wanderers. Tell me that wasn't a tough run for Ellis there. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, this kid's shifty. Look at he just keeps fighting, fighting, fighting for yards. And St. John's doing everything they can to put this kid on the ground. Emotions are picking up in this game, Chris. This is going to be a real fun in fourth quarter. Well, that's it. It's a one-score game. Fighting for first place here in the MFL. Another handoff to Ellis. Oh, oh play action. A fake. Right out here, I think that's Hicks. Tori Hicks, good yep. play action Tori there Hicks. by Comfort. Pass complete to Tori they Hicks. sold you on the play, Chris. They well, sold you. It was the, the windows in here, <laughs> if you can see the ledge <laughs> that obstructed my view. But uh, again, you're expecting Ellis to possibly run that out here at the end of the quarter. But uh, Comfort able to roll out here his left and pick up some nice, a nice gain here to Hicks as teams switch ends. So we're heading into the fourth quarter, 14 to seven, Mustangs ball, Chris. I think it's very important for the Mustangs to come out and put points on this drive. Um, I think they have to answer what their defense has done for them and really have kept them in this game with uh, four or five drives here inside their own 10 yard line where they've held uh, St. John to no points. So there's some weapons on this offense for the Mustangs. When you look out wide at green and, uh, and white, uh, like you said, the backfield here with Ellis and Morley, uh, not to mention Newcomb in the slot and Hicks. So uh, interesting to see here how the Mustangs I still attacking the Wonders. I still think it's important that the Mustangs keep running the ball. They've got to, they've got to control the clock, Chris. They've got to really do their best at uh, continuing that ground game. But I really want to see them take some shots at Green downfield. I want to see them get Cameron 
Cameron Marley out into open space. Um, those two receivers downfield um, can really make a big difference for them in this uh, final quarter. Again, that run game so important here for the Mustangs with that big old line. He said Taylor Burns checking into the game. Oh, there's a nice little shovel pass inside to looks like uh, Caldwell getting a it's, handoff. It's a big boy for sure. I got to see the number here this on could the be replay. A, a guard around. So you're gonna see him coming on the the fake and then the shovel pass forward. It'll be first yeah, it's 99. That's uh, Brandon, Brandon Caldwell. Caldwell. Normally plays defensive end for these guys, and they've got him in uh, as a little tight end gimmick there. Looked like he was lined up as a guard and then came around for that shovel pass. You're going to see here quads to the short side of the field. You're going to see Morley, oh, getting outside, flag thrown. Likely a holding call. That looked like a holding Cameron call Morley to me. Cameron Morley down. getting to the outside. It could be a Saint. It could be a first down if it uh, somehow ends up being against St. John. But I think we're going back here, Chris. I think there's a hold here uh, that sealed the edge for Morley. He picked up some nice yards, but uh, all for naught here is uh, the Mustangs walking back towards their own end zone. We have an illegal block on the offense. Number 14, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Akeem White on the outside. A lot of times cracking down to try to set that edge for the run. Holding against the Mustangs, it'll be first and 20. Well, that pushes them back now. It's first and about 15 here. And now we've First got and 20, it's first and 20. We've got quads here to the short side of the field over the middle for Newcomb. Nice catch. Beautiful hands by Newcomb there, bringing that ball in. That's a big play on first down on when you have first 20. That's going to bring up about second and three. That's a big play by Daniel yeah, Comfort there. They're really starting to work the middle of the field. Lots of time. Moncton starting to use four. quads formation, basically four receivers on one side of the field to try and spread St. John out here a little more. You're going to see it again. Quads to the short side of the field. Up to the top with some motion. And then running inside. That looked like Abrielis up the middle Aubrey again. On the carry. That's good for a Mustangs first down. There's your first down. The sticks are moving. The referee has signaled first down. The Mustangs have done exactly what they needed to do. And that's pick up another first down. And let's see what uh, Comfort uh, does on this next play. See if they stick to the ground here. If they start looking to take shots, you got 12 minutes left in the fourth. They're only down seven, the though. Wind. Pitch to the outside. Good job. Woo! Flag late on the play with number eight flag coming up to set that edge. Nice tackle. It looked like Aubrey Ellis uh, slipped on that play, Chris. Looks like he slipped, and as he was going down, he took a helmet shot there. Uh, we're going to see here. No. Oh, it's against the Mustangs. That's that's what I thought. I think uh, Bell came up and uh, made that tackle. I don't think it was a headshot, but I think there may have been a legal block on the outside there again, possibly getting that edge for uh, for Ellis. Obviously talking with McGarvey here, DB with St. John. And we'll wait to hear the official call. We have a legal block. On the offense, number 23. That penalty's declined. Second down. Okay. Second down. And that's uh, that's probably a good call by the St. John defense. Taking away a down as opposed to giving them four more shots here to gain 20 yards on that illegal block. But nice, nice play by Bell to step up there and force that run quick. Flare pass out to Hicks. That could be a live ball. Hicks jumping to get on it. As the Wanderers pick it up, that's McGarvey. We'll see if that's ruled a backwards pass. This is going to be real interesting. This is the White Hats call here. He's looking for some. He's looking for assistance from his sideline guy here. What'd you see? What'd you see? That's what he's asking him. Let's have a look. It's about at the 35-yard line. 
where Comfort throws that. Looks to be forward. Although it's behind Hicks, it is a forward pass. It looked like a forward pass. But this not by much. So that's going to be an incompletion. Good job by this referee crew to get that correct. As you can see, the umpire's going up to spot the ball back where it was. Again, but good heads up by the St. John defense to pick that up. It's an incomplete pass. It'll bring up third down for the Mustangs. So third down. Well, the Mustangs would like to thank the city of Moncton for their continued support. Make sure to check out the city website at www.moncton.ca for upcoming And even <laughs> the Moncton offense, that, that was a backwards pass as they had come off the field. They had left the field. What What's interesting about that play there, when that ball went behind the receiver, Chris, did you see how he kind of gave up on the play? When when you're taking a when you're taking a pass from out of the backfield, whether the pass is there or not, you've got to fight for that ball because you never know what those officials are going to call on that play. Well, you know, and you could see him seconds. give up on that ball, which is Check why St. John was able tonight's. to recover the ball. There. But we, we've alluded to it in some of those flare passes early in the game where you have to be careful where that is possibly a backwards pass, which is a live ball, yeah. which just in that same scenario could be recovered by the defensive team. Comfort back to pass here, setting up a screen. That jailbreak screen once again to Newcomb. That's Brady Newcomb, and he's close to a first down here. He's close to a first down. It's going to be fourth and short. Fourth and short. He's just about to the 50. He's got to get to the 52. And I don't see Ben George coming onto the field. That's ben George is still Brady sitting Newcomb. over on the team It'll bench, be so the Mustangs are going to go for this. And with uh, 11 minutes left to go in this ball game, it's probably the right move to make. You're at Remember, Chris. Field. They're fighting for, they're fighting to host the Maritime Bowl and have uh, first overall in the playoffs. They need to win by seven. Ooh, nice wow. wow action by Comfort. Quarterback option, Comfort still on his feet. I have to say, I've been refing football for a long time and I've seen this kid play since he was young. There's not many times you see Daniel Comfort <laughs> scrambling for yards downfield. That was exciting. I hope the crowd enjoyed that as uh, that as much as I enjoyed that. Seeing Daniel Comfort scramble for <laughs> yards, that's fantastic. <laughs> Almost a bit of a read option there. The defensive end came upfield. He pulled it back and racked off a nice, looks to be about a 20-yard gain here for Comfort. That'll pad the stats. And you know that lane's there because it's not too often a defense has got a spy on for Daniel Comfort. <laughs> so that's that was amazing. That was a great play. Good play call by the Mustangs. Picking up a crucial first down here Ooh. on fourth. And again, Passes trying to hit Caldwell. He is a big boy on that field. Look at the size Large of this dude. guy coming back to the huddle. Defensive lineman out of Moncton High and played at Acadia. And he was open there. He was open. He had coverage, or he had, uh, he had the space to make that catch and take it for a few yards. Now he would have to declare as an eligible receiver on that where That's he's right. wearing. He's in the backfield field. right now. See him in the backfield? So he's eligible. Passing again here. Comfort Good there's pass. Leslie Green. And he's still on his feet. Ooh! Takes a shot. Going down to the ground by Bell. That's a great down. pass by Comfort right there. That was one he sat back and he ripped that ball, Chris. You could see that throw right there. That's a nice foot thrown football to Leslie Green, who takes the takes the ball down, gets the first down. Now they got the ball around the 20 yard line, 22 yard line for first down. Mustangs looking to tie this game up. Pitch out here to Morley. He's heading for the sideline. He's got to cut it back. Good pursuit by the Wanderers. And he fumbles. The ball's loose on the turf, and the Wanderers come up with it. Huge turnover here. Eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Well, see here Morley trying to cut back against the grain, changing hands, which he should do. But his own knee knocks the ball out. 
Finish line car well, you've heard this phrase First a million times when it comes to football, Chris, and Arizona that's sometimes you just try to do too much, to and that's exactly what happened on that play. Roberts. He would have been better off to just take the loss there and live to fight another day, but Cameron Morley tried too much there, and uh, unfortunately that ball came loose and St. John recovered. Now we got Wander's ball first down. They're up 14 with nine minutes left to go, and don't forget, the Mustangs need to win this game by seven to have first overall in the playoffs next week. If they're looking to host, I think they would be happy with just winning the game by one just for bragging rights here against these Wanderers. Oh, almost a bit of a, a mishap there on the handoff, but a nice pickup by Kernu. And again, this is a big man, folks. He's a big man, but did you see the stutter steps there? He gets about eight yards past the line of scrimmage, and he's out there stutter stepping. Watch this. Watch. Boop. Right there, there's your little stutter step by a big heavy man. I love that. <laughs> Some soft feet there by Kurgo. Even taking that handoff from Galbraith, he just basically ripped it out of Galbraith's hands and said, I'm running the ball. But uh, again, the, the St. John run game boded well for them last year in the final. Let's see if they eat up some clock here with the, this potent run game again. We got a whistle pre-snap. Looks like the official's resetting here. It's the play's called in. So Galbraith in the pistol with Kernu in the backfield. Up the middle again. Good for a couple yards, but again, wearing out this yep. Mustang defense. They're just going to keep pounding this ball now. Yard. It'll be second and nine. They're going to try to eat up as much clock as possible, Chris, and... Uh, you know, make it tough for the Mustangs uh, to get their offense back out on the field. Seven minutes remaining into this game. And I'd be really surprised to see Galbraith drop back to drop a pass here. Uh, I think they're going to lean on the run game here a bit, but I'm pretty confident in Galbraith. As we see her play action up the sideline. Oh! That defender going for the ball didn't have his head turned, but well, no P.I. called. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was wrong. I said uh, no chance of him throwing another pass, and then he lines up and throws a pass. Now, this is one thing from a coaching perspective I've never fully understood. You're the visiting team. You're up by seven. You're trying to run out the clock. You've now thrown an incomplete pass. You've just made the clock stop, leaving more time for the Mustangs offense to get back onto the field. I think you look at what the, the Wanderers have done today and that has been aggressive with their play call and they were taking a shot there to put seven points on the board. Unfortunately just came up empty and they know they have Kernu who is carrying the ball in his wrong hand but still gaining positive yards. And he went down hard there folks. That, that is not an that easy job as a running back. He had three or four guys come in and uh, put a hit on him. Here's the first, here's the second, and here's the third just to <laughs> clean them to up. To cap it off. You're not landing on pillows either. So that brings up fourth down. And again, it's going to be really interesting to see what the Wanderers do here because uh, their special teams uh, have been uh, interesting today, to uh, say it nicely. Well, we've seen that special uh, extra points or field goals basically haven't... Uh, Worked out in their favor. Again, you're going to see a punt formation with two guys on side. Let's see if they go to the short or the wide side of the field. Okay. He kicks it down the, the middle. An impressive punt. This is going to go out at the two, which is probably the best case scenario here. A nice no return for the Mustangs. Nice punt here by the Wanderers. I just don't know what you're going to get with St. John Wanderers from play to play. <laughs> you know, hey, we've seen not the greatest special teams. That was a fantastic kick by number 30 there. Put the ball out at the uh, six-yard line. And, boy, this puts pressure on the Mustangs' offense. They got a long field to work here to put some points on the board. So St. John, after that fumble recovery from the Mustangs, Able to pin the Mustangs back down here inside their six. Not able to put any points on the board, but making it a long field for the Mustangs to go here. 6.26 left in the fourth quarter. It's 
St. John's rushing a player off the field. They had too many guys on, but uh, they've got it sorted off before the uh, Mustangs broke the huddle. And that's when you have guys like Seal playing both ways here. In at safety. You gotta know who's who. Now Comfort on the roll. Oh, going for Caldwell again. Just out of the reach. Passes incomplete, that brings up second down. The big man laying out for it. And you know what? Dan Comfort had some room there, Chris. If he would have taken off of that ball, watch as he comes around here. There was some uh, there was some space. There was some open field ahead of him if he wanted to pick up a few yards on his own as well there. You can see that edge collapse as the left defensive end for St. John pursuing to the tailback. Comfort snuck out the back door. Let's see how they play it here. Throwing on first down on that play action. See if they try to get some yards with Ellis. Comfort going to be throwing again. Up the seam, intercepted. Oh, dropped it. McGarvey had it. We got a flag in the end zone, though. There's a flag. I think we got a rough passer. This is roughing the passer. Yep, there it is. Comfort threw that off his back foot. You're going to see here. Oh, he threw that flat footed. That ball was long gone before he, that, that. There was no need for that player to hit the quarterback there. We have a necessary roughness. Number 44 hitting the quarterback. 15. First down. That's Tyler Ring Deneen. He must be brothers with Riley. But uh, they, uh, yeah, there wasn't, there was no need to hit comfort there at that point in the game. Uh, but. Mustangs will take that. They got first down at the 20-yard line now, Chris. Out from under their own goalpost now, the Mustangs. Comfort again, quick hitter. And that's Newcomb we on the own. He rolled up in his own player here. Another that's flag down. There's a flag down on the play. Oh, he's already gave a signal. This is against the uh, Wanderers. Unnecessary Goal 15 roughness. up from there. 15, so that's roughing the passer again. Oh, that wasn't uh, unnecessary roughness. Number 44, defense, hit to the head with the elbows. 15, unnecessary roughness against the Wanderers. First, first down for the Mustangs. You're going to see here, too, the last couple plays here by the Mustangs where your tailback, Ellis, is vacating early, basically indi indicating that Comfort's throwing the ball. He's gotten out quick here twice. But the Wanderers have given him 30 free yards here with two roughing the pass for penalties. Bringing the ball out here to, looks to be about the 43 yard line. Comfort now again, passing situation. And he's going deep for Green. And he's got him. Got him. What and a play. A catch. What a play Comfort made there. That's the guy we've been talking about all game, Leslie Green. He's got the speed, he's got the hands downfield, and that time he got behind the defensive back. Comfort found him, and Chris, that's a good 30 to 40 yard play there for the Mustangs offense. Nice throw and catch there by Comfort and Green. You only need one foot in in the Canadian football. So that catch ruled complete. But that sets the Mustangs up here inside St. John territory, 34 yard line. Looking to go and score. Do you go back to the air here again and go deep or are you gonna go back to the run game? Back to the run with Morley. Cameron Morley running it out. He's picked up about six yards there. You know Cameron Morley wants that ball in his hands. He wants to put one in the end zone to make up Cameron for the Morley, uh, earlier mistake. Nice tackle there by Colin Slay. We got a player down. He's taking a knee. I think that's Caldwell. I see Taylor Burns just reported back that into the huddle. We got a little timeout on the field while they attend to the player. Four minutes left to go in this game, Chris. Anything can happen still in this football game. Well, that's... We've seen what can happen here in a matter of 30 seconds where you go from your own six-yard line down to the the opposing 24. Does take long to score. Two penalties and a big play. That player is off to the sideline, and it looks like we're going to be uh, getting the water out and the buckets back on and ready <laughs> to play. Get everybody hosed off here. Let's 
Back to football here as the Mustangs. Going to be second and two. Back to the set here. Comfort pitching it out here to Morley. Sees met upfield by Bell. Nice tackle. That's going to be a loss. Nice job of protecting your your outside edge here and your flat by St. John. Yeah, it, again, that uh, that's Bell coming in off the edge there and completely shutting Morley down in the backfield. We talk about that first contact made by your edge player coming from those DBs, and, man, it's great for a defense when they can bring that ta uh, ball carrier to the ground. Not only forcing them back inside, but when they can make the tackle or the play themselves. We're going to see Comfort here with a, a balanced set. Two receivers to both sides. He's looking over the middle, and he's got White. Bit of a crossing play. He's able to hold on to that as he's taken down to the ground inside the, they say it's a 10 yard line. That's good for a Mustang first down. We got another big first down here by Dan Comfort. Look at this pass. Right over the middle of the field in traffic. There were rub route there Great by the Mustangs. By yep. And we take it down for a first down. This is a big drive for the Mustangs. They need points here. We're now at the three minute warning with four in the in the fourth quarter. That means the clock's gonna stop on every play. So first down at the ten. Looking to go in for a major. And he's going. Deep ball. Ooh. Defended by Bell. He was looking for Newcomb. That was a danger pass down. because Bell had a bigger Here's break on that ball than the uh, Mustangs down. receiver. Join the Mustangs and get yourself a Mustang special. Bell had Bell inside position on that. Bud Light for $19.99 tax included. And $5 from each order goes to the team. And that's the one Must thing you can't do down here order. is turn the ball over again, either through the air or a fumble. So again, you got about 11 yards to go. You can still get a first down here without scoring. Let's see if they go back. Dallas are going quads to the left. Again, looking to spread St. John out. They're in a zone. Going deep again. He's got White. Wide open. And you can see some inexperience there from Seal at safety. They didn't have any help over top of that quads. Easy completion here for White. Yeah, that's a beautiful slant right there. Got around Bell from behind, and White takes that ball into the end zone for a touchdown, making this game 14 to 13, pending Ben George's extra point. Quite confident in George's kicking abilities here, so the extra this, point should be. This is a very important special point coming up right now, and I have to tell you, the pressure on the long snapper, Denny Dueron, watch this snap. Uh-oh, you called it, blocked. Although a dead play. That's a dead play, no points. But I, that ball can't be returned for points the, the opposite 15, way. The Mustangs, when I gave Denny Dwyer on the shout out there, I was expecting <laughs> a nice clean crisp snap. I wasn't ho I wasn't planning on uh, the the misconvert attempt there. You were hoping for the laser snap and instead bobbled slightly there by good penetration by St. John to come in and, and thwart that extra point attempt. So still leading on the scoreboard, 14-13. He got the ball back, though. I have to place that on the holder. The holder should have got that ball down, don't you think? It's, a, it's an art form in itself, getting that ball down for the place kicker. And again, sometimes you like to work on it every day. The reality is most of these teams can practice maybe twice a week. That's it. So now this is big. We got two minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this game. And you can see, look at the way Ben George is lining this up. I don't think this ball is going too far downfield, Chris. This is going to be onside. They've got seven guys lined up here to the left of the ball, which is where you expect the, the kick to go. Let's see if St. John has the hands team out. They're shifting around out there. They're trying to figure out how they want to uh, take on this kick. 
They got some big boys out there. I don't know if you want your whole line up in the first row of the uh, the hands team here, but uh, they're going to take on the the blockers. It's got to go 10 yards. It's up. Jump ball. Jump ball. It's down. Looks like St. John's falling on it, but lots of banging going on down there as guys going up for that loose ball being met by blockers. Again, this is where you have to have your head on a swivel because players are coming sweep. down to to lay hits and then Arnold. That's Evan Arnold. And, that and ball, Seal. Yeah, Evan Arnold and Seal. They, they uh, trapped that ball and uh, now it's St. John's ball. Mustangs defense has got to come out and play tough here to get that ball back for the offensive score. Let's see here. You, you mentioned earlier there's there's 2.44 left here in the third. Or in the fourth, sorry. They're calling a timeout here. Looks like St. John is. Galbraith on the sideline. Having a discussion with Coach Jowdry. As the Wanderers are going to discuss the plan of attack here. So 2.44. You're not able to run the clock out, but uh, you want to gain a couple first downs here uh, on the ground. But to that point, how aggressive are you with St. John? You have a one-point lead. Do you trust your rookie quarterback to put the ball in the air? No, I don't. I, I, I would. I if I'm if I am St. John's head coach right now, I'm putting my five guys right up on the line of scrimmage. And I'm going to put Arnold right behind them, and I'm going to either run Kernu or I'm going to run uh, Josh or Brown behind them, and I'm going to just run this ball for every play for the rest of this game, uh, as long as they maintain the lead. Um, we have not seen an interception yet today, and you know number six, Bobby McIntyre, and number 21, Nathan Anderson. Those are two guys that are going to be hawking the ball on these uh, plays if he does decide to put the ball up. But look, he's got the ends out wide. See, he's got. We only have a three-man front right now. He's pitching. Big block on the outside there, as Arnold got lit up here on the outside. And again, Chris, I don't know if I really like this play call. I don't know if I like this play call. I, I would rather line my Tyler five big men up on the line of scrimmage and just pound the rock be between the tackles and uh, keep that, that ball moving forward. You, they picked up no yards on that play. The ball, the ball goes dead in play, so the C's going to wind the clock up right away. We'll see here. Second down and nine. I mean, they are running the clock, but they could have gotten more yardage. Let's see here. Moncton's got the box stacked. Her new stop for a little gain there as well. The benefit of running wide to the field is taking a little more time off the clock. But you're going to see here, just stacked oh, up Kern inside. Good job line. there by number 50, Blake Elaine. I believe getting off that block, making a tackle. He did, yeah, that was definitely a lane. Matthew Martin product. Really a stalwart here on that Mustang defense. Right, here we go. They got two wide receivers out wide, three man formation. Arnold's in there as well, though. Let's go to the air, baby. Galbraith up ball, nice catch by Noel. Hold on to the ball. And he gets the first down and moves the chains. That's a gutsy play call, Chris. That's a gutsy play call that, that was, again, that confidence from Galbraith we've been talking about. He threw a nice pass there, and Noel picked that up, took it downfield, and got the first down. That's a key first down for this Wanderers football team. We got a man down on the field right now. Looks to be Noel who made that catch. It is, it is. I don't is. know if he has something in his eye or if he's... It's too bad to see the kid get hurt, but that was a gutsy catch for that first down. And uh, like I said, that was a key play for this uh, Wanderers football team that, that wants to... The, the Wanderers don't want to just, you know, they want to win today's game. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They want to win today's game. They, they, they want first seed in the playoffs, but they want to send a message to the Mustangs. We swept you in 2019. We'll see you in the playoffs if you can make it to us. Well, and that's 
the likelihood of these two teams probably meeting in the finals. Um, again, setting the tone here are the, the Wanderers for the rematch as they do have a one point lead. A minute 40 left here in the fourth quarter. Now a first down, so you got four attempts here to run some, some time off the clock. And they go back to the sweep here to Kernu. Still running hard. Legs pumping, taking some time off the clock and adding yards as things get to start to heat up here. We had a late flag come in there from your umpire. So something happened behind that play, but I'll tell you that Kernu, he is a big kid and he is tough to bring down to the field. Watch this pitch, Chris. Takes it to the outside, breaks a tackle there, spins away from another tackle. He's carrying four guys on his back and finally goes down. I'm just hoping he got his knee in bounds to the clock. Give unnecessary roughness on the defense. Number seven, 15 yard penalty. First down. That's second unnecessary roughness unnecessary on number roughness seven here for the Mustangs. Mustangs. First down for St. Again, we, we don't have a number seven. That, again, that's Terry Vino's old number. <laughs> and that is something you would have seen Terry Vino do back in the day. So We're going to see here that's going to add some more yardage here. Placing the ball, geez, on the, the two-yard line here for the Wanderers as they may be able to extend this one-point lead here if they so choose. Head coach Jason Terrace is coming out to have a conversation with the referee. I'm not sure. That was a quick conversation. Those are the exact kind of conversations <laughs> you want to have. When, when you're the head referee, if the conversation is that quick, that's exactly what you want. I'm not sure if there's any... Uh, uh, any two two penalty, you're not ejected from a game if uh, if you receive two uh, unnecessary well, roughness or objectionables. Possible, but I don't think Terrace would be the one coming out to report that because it was his <laughs> player. And I, he he came a long way for that two second conversation. Well, he's in good shape. Well, <laughs> he, he, he could come all the way to the end zone. I think Terrace might want to be in there <laughs> playing D line right now for the Mustangs where. Again, the handoff looks to be to Brown. He's short. short. He's short. That ball's going to be at the one. It's going to be second and one. Josh Brown on the carry. With Holy one minute now. and 18 seconds left to go. This defense is going to have to play really tight, Chris, to avoid any more points going on that board to give their offense one more chance. And at this point here, too, you don't mind not... Scoring at this point here, you're saying, John, you want to take some more time off the clock so that even if you, you do score, you almost want to go for two to make this uh, lead here a little more manageable. And there it is. There it is. That's what I call the rugby uh, the rugby formation. <laughs> Watch this. Here we go. No, look at this. Look at this Arnold. angle right here. Boom. Arnold right across that line. He is a tough boy to stop. Look at this. That's just a rhino offense there. Yeah. I call it the rugby formation. <laughs> it's definitely a scrum, so they are going to line up here for an extra point where this will just give them basically a two-point uh, lead if the Mustangs were to, uh, to convert here. So we're going to make it a 21-13 game. Hold is good, and the kick is through. There you go. That's, Execution. That's going to make it 21 to 13, and we have a minute and four seconds left to go in this ball game. That means, Chris, just so you know, we need the Mustangs to take the ball downfield, score points, and score have major a and have a two-point conversion, and have time to come back and line up for another short kick. kick recover it's this is going to be really tough but again in canadian football a minute and four seconds is a long time because we're stopping the clock on every play exactly i think the mustangs they've got to be just focused on right now is just getting that one score as in getting the six points on the board then even going for two here would still be a point short uh, but lining up again trying to recover an onside kick and get another major so we'll see what the uh, plan is here for the Wanderers 
they try a short kick once again or if they're going to kick deep to White and see if they set up any kind of return. With a minute left to go in this game, there's still a solid crowd here at Rocky Stone as well. This is great to see. Great little atmosphere here today. Great day for football, but then again, every day is a great day for football. Solid turnout again. You'd like to see the stands full here, especially uh, championship weekend if uh, if these two teams happen to, to meet up again. Uh, Peterson now looking to kick off. Mid-range kick. White fields it. And he's up the sideline. He's got some blockers. He could go. White's on his horse, and he's going to take this to the house. No flags on the play. Until now, until now, did you see that? White, taunting? White holding that ball out, taunting. There is no need for that. Was that uh, before he crossed exactly, the plane? He, he called that for taunting. Uh, this is going to be another interesting call by these officials because the referee was reaching for the flag before he crossed the end zone. Does he hold this out before he crosses oh the line? Oh my goodness. Oh, what he's, he done? He, he play, was taunted from the 20th. So we also have intentional conduct. Number 14, 10 yard penalty. Nine rules, no touch rod. College rules. That is, uh, listen, <laughs> they are lucky. Uh, exactly what we talked about. A minute four, you got lots of time left. You need an early score. They got just that. But now they're going to be back 15 yards on the line, or 10 yards back. There was just no need for that, Chris. All right? Obviously, there's a rivalry between these two teams, but they've that doesn't help you win. They've applied the 10 yards on the extra point. Exactly. Okay? Which and don't forget, don't forget the Mustangs need, they could... They could really use two points here on this convert. So they have just made this so much more tougher because of a play like that. That Players got to be smarter than that. So comfort out here to two. They're looking to tie the game as it's 21-19. Comfort going to go to the air. The ball is up. That's nearly intercepted by Lands incomplete. No that was that Joe Seal running into his own defensive <laughs> back. And that's why that ball wasn't intercepted because uh, you had two guys run into each other. Looks like Bell and Seal both converging at the same time. So we got no points scored there. We're going to come back and we're going to kick off from the 45-yard line. Fans starting to file back into Rocky Stone Field here after that kickoff return. So now Moncton going to have a chance here for... An onside kick, hoping to recover. Still 48 seconds left in the game here where they could take a couple shots to the end zone to either set up a field goal, which would win the game for you, or possibly score a major. You know, it's interesting as a football official when I watch a play like that, Chris, because I always hear, and especially if you watch the, ho or the hockey game the other night, the Bruins and the, and the, the Blues, Blues. They always talk about the officials. They made a mistake here. The officials make a mistake here. And the officials get thrown under the bus like crazy. But we forget about that play. And that was a big play, a big mistake by that player on that. There's just no need for that kind of stuff in, 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 a, in, a, in the game of football. Run in. Take your six points. <laughs> Sorry. I totally agree with the... Uh, the... Uh, the call here, especially where taunting leads to uh, some extracurricular activities usually on the next play as Moncton may have the ball, loose ball on the ground. Yes, that's a Moncton ball, Chris. And there you have it at the 50-yard line. Moncton recovers the onside kick. Wow. What a turn of events. Let's, right? see, let's see if St. John maybe went to sleep here early thinking they had this game in the bag. Nice high kick here by George. Seals got it. Leslie Green going up for it. And you can see Ellison Green signaling they recover that wow. ball. Seal had his hands on that ball too. He had his hands on the ball. Now we've got 47.4 seconds left in the game. It's 21 to 19. 
And really, with George's leg, you know, 15, 20 yards, you can set up for a, a field goal conduct. attempt here. On the Moncton bench. Ooh. That's a 10-yard penalty. Again, not doing First yourself any favors. Uh, on the Mustang side, a taunting penalty, and now an objectionable conduct on the bench. That's 21, that's 20 yards in penalties you've just received in the last 30 seconds. That's unexcusable. This game's 21 to 19, Chris. This game could very easily be 21 to 21 with the ball at the at the 50 yard line going to win the game. And first seed of the playoffs. Quick pass over the middle to Morley, incomplete by comfort. Looking to use the middle of the field here, but certainly doing themselves no favors in trying to win this game with 20 yards of penalties here, dead ball penalties uh, that uh, that have set them back here to the 50, their own 50 uh, yard line. So I'm making it a little longer here if they were to try to set up for a Ben George field goal. Field goal's no good at this point. Well, field goal's good enough field for goal a win. Field goal wins the game. Yeah. You're looking it to wins host. the game. It wins the game. But Which they is need, what you're trying to do. Yeah. They need to win by seven. Comfort That's rolling to his right here. He's got, oh, Newcomb bobbles quickly, but holds on. Swarmed by three. Oh, oh. Thing incomplete. Incomplete. Hit the ground. Well, so they're saying no, 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 says McGarvey. As they look to call that incomplete, so that's going to keep the Mustangs here at their 50-yard line. 36 seconds left. And it's going to be third down and 20 after that objectionable conduct. So some, some yards to go here for the Mustangs. Let's see what they come up with. Out of the bag of tricks here for, for third and 20. Comfort back to pass. He's going to green. He's got it. That's a manageable That's fourth down. Now you've got yourself in a fourth down position. It's very manageable. You still got 30 seconds on the clock. But they need to be on the ball. Be on the ball because the referee's going to blow this in. Time's going to clock. Watch. As soon as the referee blows his whistle here, that clock is stopped. Oh, oh, see? You got to wait for the whistle, fellas. You got to <laughs> wait for the whistle. Everybody was in motion before the play was actually called in, so the play blown dead and reset here. Here we go. 29 seconds. It's fourth and two. We'll see if they run the ball or if he stays in the air and he's going to throw to Ellis on the backfield. He's got room. He's got the corner. Down to the 10-yard line, well in range. That's good for a Mustangs first down. Let's see if you spike the ball here. Again, McGarvey lost coverage. We got a timeout coming in from the Mustangs. Timeout, charge to the Mustangs. This is in field goal range. The Mustangs had a little bit of a benefit, Chris, and there's nobody else in this stadium that would pick this up except for me as a referee. <laughs> There was a mistake by our head referee in the last play because the the play prior to this one ended in a catch in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. So what should have happened as the offense comes up the line, the referee's got to blow the clock in to start the clock. Instead, he held it up and held the clock until the ball was snapped. So the Mustangs gained a couple extra seconds, seconds there. I didn't we'll catch the full play. have to send that into the review board, but jeez. I didn't catch the whole play because I was watching what was going on with the referee there. I was—I almost yelled at him, "Blow it in! Blow it in!" <laughs> I know we can hear him. Can he? Can he hear us? So let's see what the Mustangs do here. Twenty seconds. It is a first down. Are you going to kneel this a couple times to kill the clock and then kick the field goal, or are you going to try take a couple shots to the end zone? They're taking a shot at the end zones, my guess. Comfort throwing deep. Oh, nearly intercepted. As he was thrown for White That's in the corner. That brings up second down. There was a bit of a collision there, I think, between White and uh, number two here for St. John. That's, That's Bell, number eight. 
That looks like yeah, number eight. That's that's Bell. And Bell came. He he covered a lot of field to get over to that ball, Chris. He covered a lot of ball or a lot of field getting over to. He made a spectacular play to get to that ball. I know he was hoping to come down with the ball. But you don't want to throw an interception at this point in the game. No, you don't. Taking uh, taking a shot at the end zone where you have a chance to win the game, timeout. kicking Archie a field goal from this line of scrimmage. We now have a timeout against St. John. That will be their final timeout. And we got 14 seconds left. 14.7 seconds left. Mustangs are down 21 to 19. So again, you're... Your point being, if, if Moncton wanted to host from here on out, they would have to win by seven in order to do so, which this seven may be out of the, the realm here today. But well, uh, anything can happen. Anything yeah, can happen, but if they, again. If they, if they score on this play, well, the kickoff's going to be quite exciting. It's going to be quite exciting. It, it would be interesting. Let's see if they take another shot here to the end zone. You have enough time to run probably two, if not three plays here if you're the Mustangs. Second down coming up. But you want to make sure you have time to get the field goal unit on if uh, if this comes up incomplete. So Comfort, back to pass, over the middle in the dirt. Comes up incomplete. That's incomplete, that brings up third down. Three seconds off the clock. I don't know if Comfort was actually trying to complete that pass or if he was just trying to kill the play. Yeah, Ike was just trying to kill the play there because I didn't see any uh, black shirts in the area of that ball. He was trying to hit a crosser, but uh, again, much like Tom Brady, he's going to throw a low one in the dirt where the only guy who might catch it is his own receiver if he goes down for it, but uh, not looking to throw an interception over the middle of the field. So quads to the left. Wide side of the field. Comfort looking. Rolling to his right now. Under pressure. Taking a hit. And caught. Brady Newcomb. Brady Newcomb. What a play by Comfort there, Chris. Gets outside of the pocket. He had four wide receivers out to the wide side of the field. And Newcomb on the inside ran a, ran a slant. Covers a lot of ground here and comes back to the ball here. You'll see it right here. He comes back to the ball. What a catch by Brady Newcomb. That's quarterback to quarterback. Quite the catch. And again, giving the Mustangs the lead here. 25-21 with three seconds left in the game. They're going for two. This will make it a six-point difference if they complete the two-point conversion. But again, for momentum, for confidence, for bragging rights, victory here for the Mustangs in the dying seconds of the fourth quarter after trailing the majority of the game. Inside handoff to Ellis. He's got the two-point conversion. Two points. Two points. Chris, how big is that penalty now for taunting? How big is that penalty there? Because that that took a point off the board. Took a point off the board. They could be up by seven right now. And hosting. I know the kids. I know the kids are out there having fun, and they're you know they're they're doing their thing. But as an official that's been thrown under the bus many times. <laughs> I got to throw this player under the bus. <laughs> well, there is a bus outside of here, so <laughs> I guess that's common. But uh, a well, well executed final drive here by the Mustangs. What a great, what an absolute great drive by the Mustangs. Daniel Comfort looked very sharp there. I call it the comfort zone. He, you know, <laughs> and he's in the comfort zone. He, he, he really is a great quarterback, and and he looked, he looked great there on that drive for the Mustangs. Well, uh, well executed drive connected with Newcomb in the back of the end zone. Don't think that was his first read either. He came off a couple guys, rolled to his right, bought some time, took a hit to complete that pass, and secure victory here for the Mustangs who trailed the majority of this game here since the first quarter. But able to mount the comeback here in the fourth. With three seconds left, we'll see 
how far George decides to kick this ball. Look at, I know this isn't on camera, but St. John's got two guys down in the end zone. I'm not sure why you'd have two down there. I'd have one, you only need one deep. You know he's gonna do a short kick here. They may try to have George kick it deep to take the time off the, the clock. But another jump ball. Whoa! Onside. That's a Mustangs ball! It's gonna be Mustang ball, but there's zeros on the clock, which is the end of the game. That is unfortunate for the Mustangs because Ben George could have kicked it through the end zone for, for there. a single point. But that's the end of the game as the referee waves the flag, indicating the fourth quarter has come to an end here, but exciting finish here for the Moncton Mustangs. Three seconds remaining in the fourth. Big touchdown drive for Dan Comfort and the Moncton Mustangs to secure the victory here, 27-21 at Rocky Stone Field here in Moncton for Ray Dunn Chris Corey signing off here for Rogers TV we'll see you championship weekend here on Rogers for the NFL An exciting matchup here between the St. John Wanderers and the Moncton Mustangs we'll see you next week